What's up, guys? We have an epic, epic podcast for you with Jason Nash. You guys are going to love it. But first, I want to let you know that we're on tour. We got Ohio dates coming up. Next week, we're going to be in all the cities in Ohio starting on Sunday through Thursday. So we're going to Toledo, Dayton, Cincinnati, Cleveland. Get your tickets to chatjt.com. We also got other dates. We're doing Appleton, Wisconsin. We're doing freaking uh, Fort Wayne, Indiana. We got an LA show June 1st, just scheduled. Locals only at the Hollywood Improv. Get your tickets again at chatjt.com. We're also brought to you by the Legends at Rumpel. What up, Rumpel? Thank you for joining the podcast once again. Legends, Le- Rumpel, best blankets on the market. Uh, their original puffy blanket is designed for adventure, built with durable materials, typically found in expensive outdoor gear. Rumpel blankets are durable, water, and stain resistant, and ultra packable, and look super sick. Go to rumpel.com slash go deep, enter code go deep at checkout to get 10% off your first order. We're also brought to you by the Legends app. Dudes, Manscaped is back, baby. Ooh, ooh. If you have pubes and you want to get them trimmed, Manscaped is here to get you trimmed up. The best for your dong, uh, keeping those trims pubed. It's all coming back to me now, but summer's coming. Are you ready to unwail your beach bod? Manscaped is here to ensure your body is ready for wild with their game, changing full body grooming and hygiene products. Get 20% off plus free shipping with the code GoDeep at Manscaped.com. That's 20% off plus free shipping with the code GoDeep at Manscaped.com. Finally, we're brought to you by Legends Athletic Greens. Guys, I drink Athletic Greens every day. I highly recommend you do too. AG1 is the best. All your nutrition in one drink. It makes you feel good, in a good mood with all those prebiotics, probiotics, any kind of biotics you need. I gave it a try because I want to look good and feel good. If you're looking for an easier way to take supplements, Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com slash go deep. That's athleticgreens.com slash go deep. Check it out. All right, let's start the show. Great logo. Thank you. Damn. It's inspired by You guys would be good in an animated show. We're trying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would be a fun one. Yeah. We're trying. We've been pitching. Right? We got two pitches ready to rock. Like a Beavis and Butthead kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. I, well, we got we yeah we got two. I, I guess we probably can't talk. Can we talk about? It? I don't know. We can say we're pitching things. Yeah, yeah. we're pitching. No, not now. Not that there's a strike. But right. Yeah, one yeah. second. Oh, the strike. We, we Jesus. got yeah. we got Forgot. two. We got two locked and loaded, ready to go. Okay. Animation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. You enjoy the pitch process? You're going in and I love pitching because we do it in character, so it's like a presentation. Right. Or it's like we're just like in character, and we're it, it's like. Or it's like a performance. It's just fun. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting to me. You don't hear, like, directors or performers talk about that very often. But I'm always, like, it's such a big part of it. And I do think it's, like, a like a fun skill to kind of hone. It's a skill. Yeah. I heard the guy Scott Cooper. Like I, Who's so that? I don't want to. He did a Crazy Heart. And he's a director. Okay. But, like, a couple of his movies, I think his last couple haven't done well box office-wise. And mm-hmm. I talked to someone who, like, had worked with them. Why am I wearing headphones and you're not? You don't have to. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I it's was, actually kind of nice. <laughs> yeah. You do what you want. Yeah, dude, that works. It Sorry. looks good. <laughs> yeah. 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 You guys are so chill. It's like... <laughs> yeah, I feel crazy. really relaxed. Every time I talk to you guys, I feel like I'm on drugs. Oh, yeah, we've nice. heard that before. <laughs> Every time. And it's a good feeling, but it's like... You gotta like you. You guys are you. You're an experience. Oh, oh that's you, nice. you are an experience. My my yeah. mother used to. My mother had a friend from France, uh-huh. and my sister is like a very. Uh, I don't know. My sister's like an incredible person, yeah. and she used to always say she would go. My sister's name is Barry. She'd go, Oh, Barry, she is an experience. <laughs> that's how I want to be described. That sounds like the, that sounds sexual and <laughs> well, I, yeah i don't know what if she meant it that way it sounds like she meant she's a rich person right rich and yeah 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 a full spirited and and do you guys do mushrooms and stuff like that last one <laughs> yeah. last wednesday do you do, how much do you do i did three little uh pills of it so not I did much three of it. yeah i did two and that's funny I, I i told my girlfriend i was like you know i'm, I'm done and then I was watching Louis Capaldi. He's like, all right, I'm doing like one more song. And for some reason, I was like, I'll do one more. Mm-hmm. And then threw it in. Yeah. But it was like on my way home, basically, when it right, hit right. me. You yeah. went to a Louis Capaldi show and did mushrooms? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was a good experience. <laughs> he was beautiful up there. And I, 
I love going to concerts on mushrooms. It's one of my favorite things to do. Yeah. The last one I was on shrooms where I saw Florence and the Machine on mushrooms. Oh. And she was great. But I also like doing mushrooms on like a uh, Idol Tuesday. Yeah. And I'll just bird scooter around and go to the park and get some sun and like people watch. And do you ever have like, um, have you had any great epiphanies or on mushrooms? I, I don't think I'll ever beat the first time. The first time I did mushrooms, I was like 25 and I was with a good group of people. And I remember I just started like running on all fours. I started yeah. running like a gorilla and they were doing a, uh, like a polo match in Santa Monica. I came down from the hills. Wow. And all these people were dressed in suits and I like ran through them on all fours. <laughs> yeah. And I was shirtless. Yeah. And I felt so free. Yeah. And I was like, I think I get so caught up in a kind of a internal processing, whether I'm like a good person or a bad person. Uh -huh. And in that moment I realized like you're not only a good person, underneath that person is just a happy monkey. And uh -huh. that's your mm. core. Mm. Right, and it right. felt really good to just be like, I'm just a happy monkey yeah, that's mm. nice. and I just want to feel the earth and eat bananas and pick bugs off my friend's back <laughs> metaphorically <laughs> sure, sure. Mm. whatever you is analogous to that why would you be behavior. a good person you seem like the best person oh why I do you know. think why would you have any doubt in your mind you're not a good person because you think you're a great person I guess I've made mistakes and also I've uh I guess I wonder if anybody's a good person or if we're ah. all governed by a kind of innate selfishness but then even to judge that does that even make you bad if you're innately selfish because you are just an organism trying to survive but then i don't want to get into some kind of like objectivist philosophy and start being like an ayn Rand head. so it's trying to find that balance between um doing what i want but not like having too many externalities that make other people's good time go bad Mm. But now I'm rambling. I'm on <laughs> mushrooms right now, dude. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. So, uh, do you do you worry about being a good person or not? No, no, not at all. I I, I know I'm a good person. I I because I, I go out of my way to make everybody feel good mm. all the time. Yeah. And, it's, and it because and I and I guess I do that selfishly. Yeah. Because I do get so much enjoyment from other people being happy, and that's who I am. I'm a people pleaser. Yeah. Have you always been that way? Yeah, yeah, I've always been that way, and and uh, it took me a long time to realize that uh, I can I don't need to be around people who aren't like me in that mm. way. So I used to have a lot of people in my life that I was like, oh, hey, why why am I trying so hard right. to make you guys happy? So now I only surround myself with people like that, right? Who are positive, positive. So is your circle who, smaller now than it used to be? Um, well, no, now it's really big because. Um, I've lived in LA for 20 years and I have like a group of like people that we all, we film with and do YouTube with and mm -hmm. they're like, uh, and we do Snapchat, we do podcasts and stuff. And so those, all those people that I have in that circle, there's probably like 15 of them. And uh, yeah, it's gotten pretty big. And they've been my friends for the last like six, seven years. It's huge, isn't it? Like the yeah. biggest? I mean, it is the biggest. It's the biggest group of people. It's the biggest group of friends in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Other than Wu-Tang. Yeah, they, but, they, but there's a couple <laughs> yeah. of those guys dropped off. Are they all so, still friends? Yeah. What's going on with Wu-Tang? Are they all still friends? I, I think they're I, doing I'd, it. I'd love to know. I think they're chilling. <laughs> I heard Method Man acts a little bit. RZA acts a little bit. I Red think, Man acts a little bit. Yeah, Red Man acts what's a your little favorite, bit. What's your favorite rappers? Favorite rappers? Oh, good. Yeah. This is what they need from me. <laughs> um, I've been waiting for someone to ask this. My kids are really into I love my kids. Well, not for this reason, but this is one of the reasons that's really fun about them is they're, they're just like have their finger on the pulse of like what is cool. Right. They're 14 and 17. One yeah. plays jazz. The other one's a 14-year-old girl who's in middle school and like just dictates like what's cool. <laughs> And uh, and it's like Frank Ocean, mm -hmm. Tyler, Frank Ocean. Steve Lacey. Okay. Oh, they have good taste. So they've like really turned me on to them. And and uh, we went to a Tyler show. Tyler with, the Creator? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Which was like, it blew, like I got her the tickets because I knew it would like blow her mind. So I got her, I took her friends. And I was like, okay, I'll go, you know, like, because she can't go alone. She's not old enough. Mm -hmm. It was the best show I ever saw. Really? And really? I'm, I'm not sure if it was because I was with her. But like I had seen Kanye um, maybe a couple months before, and he blew Kanye away. Wow! Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, wow. and the other thing that's crazy about Tyler is that it's just him. There's yeah. nobody else. There's nobody on stage. There's no band members. There's a, he did one song. He has like a song with this girl, Callie Uchis, 
and like she opened for him, but he didn't even bring her out mm. for uh, that song. It was just her track. So it was just like just to watch somebody by themselves do that for two hours and fifteen minutes. You're just like Whoa. that's pretty remarkable. How big was the venue? It was um, it was Staples. It was Crypto. Oh, oh shit! Wow. So it's huge. Yeah. Oh, he's huge. doing that big all yeah, by himself. Yeah, yeah. Commanding yeah. the stage with like how many people fit in the stables? Like tw- yeah, 20, like 25,000. 20, 25, That's awesome. It's insane. I, I just got Metallica tickets. You did. <laughs> You're into Metallica. Well, uh, my okay. So my girlfriend I was like, that about you." Yeah, I like I like metal. I, I was I've been listening to Lincoln Park a lot lately. I, I guess you, that's new metal, whatever. But I just I like hard rock. Yeah. Um. But my girlfriend really wanted to get Coldplay tickets. I'm like. I'm like, all right, I'll get Coldplay tickets, but I'm also getting Metallica tickets. <laughs> so we're going to Metallica in August, Coldplay in September. Oh, that'll be nice. That'll be nice. Coldplay's great. They're very good yeah. live. Yeah. I know, Chris, they're going to be Chris at the Rose Bowl. Mar- Chris Martin's a good performer. He puts on a show. Does he? Great mm-hmm. voice. Yeah. yeah. So I'm stoked on that. Who's but I feel like I don't know any of the new rappers nowadays. Like, I, there's like, I see like Lil Uzi. I don't know Lil Uzi. I don't know oh, Lil Uzi for. Uh, I mean, I know the name, but I don't know what he sings. Lil Peep, Lil Lil Lil's. Lil Peep. I know. Oh, you do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I watched a documentary on him. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, but he's he he passed away. Oh, he did. Yeah. Oh. How did he die? Uh, I'm pretty sure it was like an overdose. Oh. Yeah, but he. Uh, you mean Lil Pump or Lil Peep? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, R.I.P. to all the Lil's. Lil Zan. Lil Zan. Yeah. Lil Zan. He's alive. Is that for Xanax? <laughs> yeah, That's yeah. hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> That's fucking hilarious, dude. I'd be a little Xanax. <laughs> yeah, you better be pretty chill. Yeah, dude. I'm always be chill. That's a burden. Yeah, he's pretty chill. Yeah, yeah. Except for the face tattoos. <laughs> who's, who's your favorite rapper? It's got to be Kanye. Yeah, I think he's... Yeah. he's my, are you watching the... I've been watching the Tupac documentary that's on a Hulu. Whoa, 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 whoa. It's from the guys who did the Defiant ones. Stop the one clock. The Is it Tupac Doc? Mm-hmm. It's oh, a bunch wow. of parts, that too. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of stuff I've seen before, because like if, if you've been watching Behind the Music or... Yeah. They've done so many things on that whole group, but... What's the highlight of the Tupac Doc so far? Um, Probably just his dimensions as a person, like, uh, which is what I've always appreciated about him, is that he could be this like sensitive poet but then he could also be this like uh kind of like belligerent thug and both those things were like full inside of him yeah at different moments because he went to like theater school and he was like flamboyant and then he kind of adopted the gangster persona and he was shot so it kind of was the natural way to get into it and uh and yeah, he, he, cer- he certainly it. paid his dues and yeah. but then he could be that gangster guy and, and it was just as like uh full of life as like the theater kid yeah he went to theater school with jada pinkett yeah and i think yeah he, they were like in love but platonically yeah. yeah and i guess will smith in his book said he uh it always bothered him yeah he was always like she liked she wanted like the guy from the bad boy of the streets, but she ended up with the Fresh Prince or something. Like that. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's funny that Will Smith would feel that way because he's like the biggest star on, there, on earth. Yeah, well, he's clearly got a lot of psychology going on. Yeah, he does. Did you hear what happened? It, he punched Chris Rock. He slapped Chris Rock. It's <laughs> <laughs> crazy. Did you hear about this? No, what happened, dude? <laughs> Tell me. So they do this award show, the Oscars. What's right? the Oscars? It's like for <laughs> these motion pictures oh, okay, okay movie awards internally within the people who make the movies they tell people who did the best it's wild it's very self-aggrandizing <laughs> and it was supposed to be will smith's big night he was gonna win one yeah and then chris rock who's he's a comedian okay and I've he was out there and he goes after people and he made fun of jada pinkett for being bald but she's got a condition <laughs> and will smith Alapiche. got up in arms about it and Alapiche. was like was like, don't talk shit about my wife. And then Chris Rock was like, okay. And then fucking Will Smith slapped his no. ass, dude. Yeah. Oh, man. Where, and then, where but, can I see this? I don't know. It's kind of like... Is this like a, that's the thing? on iTunes, maybe, in the documentary section? Yeah, or? if you go on, like, Kazaa, oh. you can probably download, like, a, a rip of it. Oh, my God. But the thing about, like, Hollywood is they keep everything under wraps. It's sure. real, like, lock and key. Yeah. So, so don't tell people about it, because, <laughs> like, Scientology, Illuminati, all those, like, keep people who run shit. I won't are, say anything. Are they trying to like, you know, message control? We should it. probably cut this out. 
Yeah, yeah, Jake on the edit. <laughs> I don't want beef with Will or Chris or Jada or the ghost of Pac, so. I saw a good doc the other day on the plane. It's called Jurassic Punk, and it's about the VFX team that did Jurassic Park. Oh. And really interesting. And it's yeah. all about how, you know, when they used to do visual effects, they were, uh, they were physical, you know? So you'd have, like, Yoda as a puppet, and there'd be a guy, like, underneath... And yeah, then, why does that guy always look so weird? Why is he always like, yeah? He's got to be in character, I guess, even just for he's his just on the floor all day. Yeah, he's like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> And then these guys came along, and they basically figured out computers could do it way better. And, um, and they just, like, took over all of Hollywood just mm -hmm. with being able to make it was interesting it was but were they like dumb. punk rock about it like they, they were, were super kids punk. on the block yeah, and everyone was, was like fuck you guys yeah, and they were like nah dude rock. we're gonna show you what time it is yeah, yeah they got kicked out of Skywalker Ranch once oh, really yeah, yeah 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 yeah. it was cool it was a good doc wow yeah 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 I watched Jurassic Park recently it holds up it's still scary yeah yeah the T-Rex yeah. the T-Rex that was the main thing in, in the doc they were yeah. showing how they made the T-Rex I mean I can't I can't imagine being watching movies and then at that point seeing a movie like that Mm -hmm. theaters. Uh -huh. I, I feel like it just blew people away. Seeing the Star change. Wars, seeing that person? Yeah. Yeah. I He's... was... I was never afraid of the T-Rex. You never? Nah, because if you can't, like, pick your own ear, I'm sorry. <laughs> good. That's a good point. Yeah, those, those little arms, dude. You could, yeah. He, he might have the Will Smith kind of psychology <laughs> where he's like, don't make fun of my arms, bro. Yeah, like, you try to arrest him, you don't have handcuffs small enough for his dude, ass. Yeah. <laughs> he's always smiling, too. Yeah, and he's always in a good mood. I'm like... <laughs> You don't even know what's coming. Comet, bitch. Yeah, yeah. Dude, I, I gotta say that. Sorry, T Rex. As a kid, a bitch. as a kid, I never really thought the T Rex was. A, it was the Raptors. The Raptors are scary. Raptors. Oh yeah, yeah. Because the they coordinate, they plan. Yeah. Uh -huh. And they they don't show mercy. Is it is was T Rex eat meat or a T Rex as a uh, vegetarian? Well, uh, in Jurassic Park, they just feed him cows straight up. Oh, they do. Yeah, he's oh, a so carnivore. it's a carnivore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you a carnivore or vegan or veggie? No, no. I I tried to be vegan once. I can't do it. It's How long do you last? I don't know. I try for like a month. It doesn't feel. Yeah, good. I did a month too. It doesn't feel good. I can't eat that many chickpeas. Yeah, and you just don't feel. Uh, you don't feel strong, or you don't have enough energy. Something about it. I didn't like it. My dad's mm -hmm. friend Arthur was vegetarian. We were playing pickup basketball one time, and my dad posted him up a couple times. And after the game, my dad. <laughs> I was like, you know, Arthur's weak. He doesn't eat meat. I was like 16. I was like, I don't, I don't know if that's it. But just my dad was like bodying him. And Arthur was probably like, he worked out more than my dad. So I guess the expectation was that Arthur would be able to, you know. Wait, who'd your dad play ball with? Uh, his Jewish friend Arthur in the uh -huh. backyard with me and my brother, two on two. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Not, <laughs> not pertinent, his religious orthodoxy. But <laughs> just painting, no, it is. I'm painting, Jewish. And he it's had, really pertinent. He had a, He's definitely not, probably not good at basketball. Arthur only had two toes because he was a nam. And, uh, oh, really? Some of he, Part of his toes got blown off wow. by a claymore <laughs> or a mine. Damn. Which, which toes did he have? He had a yeah, the big one, the two big guys, and he ran and stuff. Ah, uh, so and just one foot had one foot had all the five, and then the other had three gone. Yeah, so he had seven total, mm. which is still a passing grade. Well, I wonder he didn't do great in basketball. That, I was about to say, <laughs> your dad, <laughs> dad, do you think it's up? maybe because he <laughs> has half a foot? You, you know what I think? I'd say if I woke up in the hospital with missing toes, can I still skate? That's true. Like border. Blade. Any kind. <laughs> That'd be your first question. Yeah. Can I still talk? Can I still skate? <laughs> Do you have family members who fought in wars? No, nah, no. My dad tried to run from the war, as I would, too. Oh, so he he went to Canada? Well, no, he just got, got married. Oh, isn't that crazy to let you yeah. get out of the war if you're married? Yeah, and then, and then he was like, then you got married, and then it was like, well, they still might take you. And then he was like, I'm going to have kids. <laughs> so they'd, they'd make, and then if you had kids, that was like, well, we're not going to take you if you had kids. Right. So the guys, so anyone could have done that. Yeah, at the time. So you're talking about, let's see, my sister was born in 67. So yeah, right in there. That's in the meat of it. Yeah, and then I came in 73. So yeah, and I was I was a mistake. Um, and um, so yeah, by then I think. How'd that, you find out you were a mistake? Did someone tell you? <laughs> they told me. Nice. <laughs> like how early? I don't know. It was just like, yeah, you were an accident. You weren't supposed to happen, mm. which but is kind of cool. Back then, I guess, too, it was Rebel. like, they're like, we weren't trying. I'm like, well, were you like using birth control or condoms or anything? And they're like, no, but yeah, but we weren't planning on it. I'm like, well, you know what happens if 
if a gal's ovulating and you bone, there's a good shot it might go down. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I listen. I haven't asked my dad if he pulled out or what. I haven't gotten into that. I can get. I can call him if you want. Do you, do you want to call him now and ask him <laughs> if he? <laughs> I can, yeah. I can, you can call him if you want, but I, I, I wouldn't be able to ask my dad if he pulled out. Here, we'll call my dad real quick <laughs> and ask him what happened. My dad's he's, in, he's not going to know what my, my dad's if my in dad Europe pulled right out. Where's he in Europe? He's in Italy. When were condoms invented? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, because, uh, you know, I was Good watching question. a movie recently. Yeah. I think it was like set in the late 1800s, early 1900s. This guy bones, and he finishes inside of her. I was like, dude. Hey, Dad, what's cracking? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, is there a problem? No, 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 no. no problem. Dad, just a quick cue. Um, did you, when I was made, like when you made mom with me, did you mean to? So when people used to have kids back then, but they weren't planning it. What? So when people Thank had you, my own speaker, you're on a podcast. <laughs> you're not just on speaker. Oh, so, it's it's one forty in the morning here. I'm something sweating. <laughs> Wait, but one more, one, 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 one more question. One more question. When people had kids back then, but didn't mean to, but w weren't wearing protection, like what did you think was going to happen? Going could happen, yes. All right. Son, I love you, but I'm going to bed. All right, I love you too. All right, bye. You guys going to have kids? Dude, he's having two. My girl's pregnant with twins. No. Yeah. Wow, congrats. Thank you, thank you. Do you know what the, they, they are yet? Yeah, boy and a girl. Oh, you got one of each. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so great. Yeah, it's kind of ideal. I mean, look, we weren't planning on twins. That certainly threw us, but it's kind of like... I do, and now I kind of love the way she looks pregnant. Yeah. I like it a lot. Like it, it actually kind of turns me on. So I've been telling her lately, I'm going to keep plugging her. I think, uh, <laughs> I think we should go for three or four. Really? Obviously, look, I'm putting the cart before the horse. I have no idea what it's like to actually yeah. have two babies in a household and be responsible for their well being. Yeah. But my brain just operates on excitement so i'm like dude let's just keep running it through let's keep going you have 14 kids yeah exactly. yeah i was looking at comedians i kept looking up how many kids other comedians have eddie murphy has 10 kids wow wow no one talks about that yeah no wonder he doesn't do stand up yeah he's busy he's busy and he's got a full audience at home you know has a lot of kids too i think it's dennis rodman yeah i was i had swim practice as a kid and they'd be like it's dennis rodman's daughter right there Really? Like, I was in Sacramento at the time. I was like, in Sacramento? Oh, yeah, yeah. Maybe he had a, had a... I think he has a lot of kids. Kids in different places? Yeah. That's shocking. Yeah. Um, he used to podcast. Did he really? Did he? Yeah. I don't know if he still does that. I feel like he's kind of... Because he had like a, a few years there where... He, oh, he talked to Kim Jong-un. Yeah. And I haven't really heard from him since. <laughs> yeah, he was almost he was, he was a bridge to peace. I know yeah, Vice went over there with him. Yeah, what did you say? He negotiated peace. <laughs> he did. He's like, look, can we squash this beef? <laughs> I know. I don't know. What, what's the, are they allowed to party like Rodman parties in North Korea? No, definitely not. But he probably should. Oh, I bet with Kim Jong he did. Yeah. Interesting. With Kim Jong, he would probably get in there. Probably had a really good time. Yeah. Do you think Kim Jong has mm -hmm. like a box full of drugs? He's like, that's Molly, that's shrooms, <laughs> that's Coke, <laughs> that's weed. It's well cut. You yeah. know what you're getting. Isn't that sort of what um, the Seth Rogen movie was based on? When yeah. James Franco goes there. The interview? The interview. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. But then that whole movie got... Yeah, shut down because mm. of the yeah. the Sony hack was it? Yeah, yeah, they they North Korea hacked them. North Korea hacked them. Yeah, they shut down. The, did, did, have you performed in like North the, Korea? No, I was going to ask in like Saudi Arabia or any places like no, that. No, never done that. No, have you? No, but I was watching like a like sixty minutes on it, like how the Saudi Arabian kingdom keeps buying up sports stuff mm. to kind of wash away the public perception of their like control and domination of the area uh, oh cool what are they buying up 
So they, they got Cristiano Ronaldo playing for one of their teams. They oh. got the Live Golf Tournament. They almost bought the WWE. Oh, wow. And then I think they're doing F1 races, too. And so by doing that, they're kind of improving their reputation. It's like a PR campaign. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But then I guess they do, like, Bruno Mars will go over there and, like, do a show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, like, human rights activists will be like, hey, Bruno, why don't you speak on the horrible atrocities and the killing of a, of a journalist? And Bruno's like, nah. <laughs> How about I get in this PJ and have a ball? Yeah. <laughs> Which, can't you do both? Can you? Well, I mean, you know, if you're, I don't know. I don't if know. I perform it's for tough. Saudi Arabia, does that make me a supporter of their regime? Mm -hmm. Tough cue. Yeah. This I is know. what I think about when I'm on shrooms. <laughs> I mean, I, th I think in a way it does, um, but I mean, I don't know. You you, you, have, you can't check everybody out, right? I mean, what are you gonna do? Depends. That's the, we, the, the offer hasn't come across the table. <laughs> Thank yet, God. So you don't but worry I got, about it. I got two kids on the way. Would you perform for Hitler? No. <laughs> what do, what no. Do you, fuck no. Unless unless I could like roast him. <laughs> If I could, you know, great dictator it and be like, oh, you're a bitch. <laughs> Dude, you suck. You suck. If, if Saudi Arabia came with an offer for to acquire Stoke Nation for $100 million. It'd <laughs> be a hard thing to say no to. Yeah. We have a friend who got a big offer from a Saudi-backed oh, company. Oh, he said right. no. He yeah, said yeah. no. He was. What were they trying to buy? A website or something? They wanted him to work with one of their recently acquired sports uh -huh. leagues, and he mm. was like, I can't do it. Oh, wow. wow. Oh, that's right. Yeah, good for him. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, he's a stone cold patriot <laughs> all the way. Through. Yeah, you know, you got to have your morals and you got to have your things that you stand up for. Luckily, like, no one offers me that kind of money, so I don't have to worry about it. But it's tough. you, know, you got to cross it when you come to it. It's a tough thing to say no to. You know, it's like everybody's done bad stuff. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, uh, hey, do you guys watch Barry? Mm -hmm. He was in it. Oh yeah, did you watch it last night? I haven't watched the new one now. It's insane this year. I mean the. Past four, was it four? Yeah. Last it, night was number five. Five, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, uh, it's crazy. It's the craziest year. It's like, it's even better than the other seasons. Yeah. I think, I, I think, they do it. I think, uh, especially it was episode three, I think. Yeah. There's one shot, like this single cam, like steady shot of where they're going through this house. Yeah. Do you remember that one with, uh, it's the it's scene with Henry Winkler. Yep. And they're like trying to divert attention because they're like searching the house. Mm hmm. Just the camera work on that. The camera it's, it's so crazy. creative. It's very unique. Very unique. I haven't seen it before. There, like the yeah. shot on the um, when he gets on the highway. That, yeah. It's a very like Grand Theft Auto shot. Oh yeah, that. Oh, that's the, a great the, yeah, shot. The, and also, I mean, it's just so um, the way they can insert goofiness in there, mm -hmm. where it's like it's like it could be like the most hardcore kind of shocking violence or whatever. Uh -huh. Then they just put like a little bit of goofy goofiness in there yeah i mean your, your part's insane i mean i've talked to you about it like <laughs> yeah, it's dude. it's so great oh, thanks, that they're gonna thanks. take a moment to talk about a guy that makes scones in eagle rock mm -hmm. but then also people go to get advice yeah from him it's so off the wall and it's so interesting too because he uses one camera like i shot my scenes in like an hour really yeah like my coverage it was just one angle really yeah that's oh, they didn't. Be... They didn't do like close-ups and wides. No, they knew they were gonna have you in that one like kind of waist high shot. Just that, yeah. Smart. Like I banged out my scenes in like probably like like my coverage, probably like forty minutes. Wow. Yeah. How and then then they just the camera, they just turned it around. Then on the other actors. Damn. Yeah. I think that's the hardest thing to do too. Is like, I mean, he's already such a brilliant comedian. Like he's one of the funniest guys mm -hmm. ever on camera. But then to have like a specific visual vision for how mm -hmm. it's going to look and how your comedy will play out like in terms of where the camera's at and stuff yeah. like that it's a hard leap for brains to make but totally. like him and like Louie and I guess Woody Allen has his own style too but Woody Allen's is kind of just like locked off wide shots and, so, and sometimes like Woody Allen shots are out of focus oh yeah 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 Yeah, like I yeah, watched yeah. Vicky Cristina Barcelona and I have more of an eye for that now and I was like oh my god like this yeah, frame's yeah. not even focused but he's so good with the dialogue and the acting that you kind of just there's shots in go. there's shots in Annie Hall that are like it, it's like it's just like a shot of a bush and it's just like voiceover like it's just it's just not even a shot right it's not great filmmaking no, by like no, a no. film school but definition. it's the best film ever it's such a good movie yeah and when I first saw the movie it just blew my mind blew, like yeah it blew my mind the amount of wit that he put in there and still had like a cohesive like emotional journey for yeah. the two characters I was like this is insane and it holds up 
It's still funny. It's like it still works. Like even the scene where the guy asks him for an autograph, mm-hmm. and it, that's like, oh, that's like t- that could be done today. The yeah. same thing. Do I know you? And he's like, you've been on TV, Johnny Carson. And he's like, no, no, I haven't. I haven't been on TV. And 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 it's like, oh my god, like you could see that today on HBO, like the same thing. It's still funny. Yeah, his mm-hmm. sensibility is kind of timeless. Timeless. And but it's also he was a stand-up too. So all those things at the top when he. When he says, like, um, I'd never be a member of any club and Mm -hmm. all that stuff was was stand up. And so he knows Mm -hmm. that it's he knows that it works. He knows that it Mm -hmm. hits. Yeah. Yeah. He tested it first. Yeah. It's really good. And I watched Pete Davidson's new show. Oh, yeah. It's it's good. Yeah. It's good. The first episode, I was like, okay, okay, And then it gets really good. How is it? Have they all released it or is it like? Uh, I think it's all out. It is. Because I watched like I think I watched like four of them. He's got Joe Pesci and Edie Falco. The cast is unreal. Dude, yeah. Bobby, Joe Pesci? Joe Pesci. Coming Bobby, out of retirement? Edie Falco, uh, Bobby Cannavale, Brett Gar- uh, Brad wow. Garrett, John Stewart. Uh, John Stewart's in there? Yeah, and it's really interesting. This guy's got it, a Rolodex. It's all older people. You know what? He's just a good... You know, we talk about how good he is at betting starlets. Yeah. He's just a, as good at not betting, but... Having really cool male friends too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's mm-hmm. like an old soul kind of too. Like, like he's, he's a, a seductive presence on both fronts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm waiting for the day he makes eyes at me and I get pulled into the vortex. Yeah. Because I want to know what the secret sauce is. What's he doing? His secret sauce? To make everybody be like, yeah, you, man. Have you met him? No, mm-hmm. I never met him. Would you box him? Sure. Yeah. Sick. <laughs> He's, he's famous for uh, big dick energy. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. BD. That's the secret sauce, I but think. I've, I've heard he's very chill and sweet. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. I bet he is. But like, but that is like a form of BDE, I think. <laughs> the Kardashians, like Kim Kardashian was sort of like, he's so attentive and sweet to me. Sure, sure, sure. I guess. It's like, And he also has a big dick. When dog. you have the big dick, you can do whatever. Right. Yeah. Is that, I mean, you really can. You can just get away you with it. You can also be an asshole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah true, true. Have you met people that you yeah. were like, that guy's got a big dick before you actually found yeah, out? Yeah, I'm looking at him right here. Whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, I mean, um, Saw the outline. I, I've never found out, but I could probably tell if someone has a big dick. You know, I have, I have my fiance lie to me about my dick, so that's that works for me. That's sweet. Yeah. <laughs> what do you ever say? Uh, she just lies. She'll just be like, oh, it's so big. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> like, come on. How'd you guys meet? <laughs> a dating app. Which one? Um, it was Raya. I've never been on that one. It's not good. It's not good. It feels like it's highly competitive on there. Yeah. Yeah. It's not good. And and, and, and then when I met her, I, I couldn't believe that she messaged me back. When I saw her picture, I was like, oh, my God. I was like, this is the greatest woman I've ever seen. And then uh, I said, all right, I'll take a shot. Hey, what's up? Whatever. And then she wrote me back. And then I uh, went on a couple dates. And then I didn't talk to her for a couple years. Oh, really? Yeah. And then... Uh, Dude, you played it super cool. No, I I mean, I, I tried. And she was just like traveling the world and stuff. And then uh, and I used to talk about her all the time. Then I went to my friend's house. And I, I was manifesting one day. And... <laughs> What does that entail? I don't know. I, I went to make like a YouTube video on manifesting. He's like, I manifest. And I was like, oh, maybe that'll be a funny video. Like, teach me how to manifest. So I'm over there and he's like, uh, well, what do, you, what do you want in life? And I was like, I don't know. I was like, man, maybe meet somebody. He's like, no, 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 no. You can't say meet somebody. He's like, you got to fucking aim for the scar. You got to write down my soulmate, my one and only forever. Like that. And I was like, okay, okay, okay. I like that. And he was like, uh, he was like, I, I, I wanted to be on Men's Health. So I wrote it down. He said, guess what? Three months later, I'm on the cover of Men's Health. Hmm. You know, and he's like. He's Who like, was this? His, his name's Harry. He's just like a great guy. He's just the best. Like, I owe him my life. He, and then he, he did other. He, we manifested a bunch of shit that day. He, Harry I, what? Harry Jowsey. Yeah, we, we had him oh, on. Yeah. Yeah, oh, you had him on. Yeah, yeah Harry, Harry's incredible. And then he was like. How hard was it to, for him to manifest being on Men's Health? I feel like that's a <laughs> I feel like that's a. I don't know, man. A, there's a, a lot of muscular dudes out that's there. That's a layup for him. Yeah. Eh, I mean, there's a lot of. If he if he wanted to manifest being on like the cover of an academic journal, I'd be like, all right, how'd you pull it off? <laughs> <laughs> but, but men's health, he's like a. And, and, then, yeah, and then he was like, he was like, well, what what what, what, do you, what else do you want? And I was like, oh, I'd love to uh, say something crazy. 
And I was like, oh, I don't know. I was like, I'd love to have dinner with Dave Chappelle, you know, like that. And he's like, all right, let's write it down, blah, 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 blah. And he's like, what else? And he's like, I was like, I don't know, I'd love to like be in shape. And he was like, okay, be in shape. And then uh, like, a, like two days later, uh, I was at an event and I didn't meet Dave Chappelle, but Jim Carrey walked right up to me mm -hmm. and stuck his hand out mm. and was like, hi, I'm Jim. Mm. And we were all like, Whoa. And he's a big manifester. Yeah. 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 So he was probably plugged into that same wavelength. Yeah. And part of me is like, this is insane that I'm even saying it. But another part of me is like, and when then, and then like, you know, three months later, I, I met my, my dream ultimate woman, like my soulmate called me out of the blue after not talking for two years. Mm. So I don't know. I, and the CIA has said a thing about manifesting. Did you see that? Did they really? Yeah, the CIA put out something. They're like, yeah, manifesting works. Really? Why would they no. put that out there, they, I swear to, to God. To keep us <laughs> manifesting so we don't audit them I or something I swear to God. Like they, like, I gotta see that. The CIA has done studies on manifesting and they put out this thing like, no way. it works. You, you know, I had, I had a weird thought last week where I was like, because you know in this career it's like ups and downs and you, sure. you can be like, even even if you're if, even if you're moving forward, sometimes you can feel like you're like stuck or whatever. Yeah. But then I was thinking back to like years ago. I was like, what would I visualize for myself? Like years from now. Right. And I was like, oh, I kind of like it was like touring comedian. Yep. Like going on TV shows, selling shows. You know what I mean? It, I was like uh, having a golden retriever, having a girlfriend. I was like. I was like, yeah, but aren't those just all decisions that, and actions that you took to get there? But that was what I was visualizing for myself. <laughs> yeah, but I think it's more the actions. You work your ass off like every day. No, I know, yeah. I know, but it was like this feeling of... I know uh, what you're saying. Yeah, it was this feeling of like, oh, I'm not where I wanted to be. But oh, but you like, are. But oh, like, oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, it was like appreciating that... It was appreciating where I am. Right. Yeah, yeah. Not that it was magical. Yeah. Um, but maybe it is. Um, well, we had that, we had this horoscope guy come on the podcast one day. Guy was nuts. And he, uh, <laughs> yeah, I was like, I'm, I'm, I guess. Do you maybe, believe in that stuff? No. And, uh, but someone pointed out that all the things he predicted have come true. Yeah. By and large. Like what? Like he said, I would get into a serious relationship. Yeah. Um, I think he said you would get into a serious relationship. Mm -hmm. But also, if you give yourself a big enough window, most people do. Here, here's the thing. You're, you're absolutely right. But also, like, if you aim high enough, you're going to be better for it. So in other words, he can sit there and go, I want to be the biggest touring comedian in the world, right? Mm -hmm. And what you might end up with is, like, a really successful tour with your buddy. Yeah. You know what right. I mean? And yeah. that's great. And you'll make a ton of money. You're not the biggest. Yeah. You're not Kevin Hart. Yeah. But you're still made a ton of money and you had a blast and you got yeah. really good at stand up, you know? Like, yeah. And that's all it is. And I do think there's value in saying what you want. Yeah. yeah. And like and yeah. owning it. Because I think a lot of people can be timid about that yep. stuff or not feel like they deserve it. Yep. And to write it down and really be like, I want this thing, yep. I think that's powerful. But in terms of like the cosmos rewarding you in some kind of way, no, I don't believe I don't, that. I don't believe the cosmos rewards you. I don't. Yeah, or I gives agree. it to you without action. No, like, no, 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 no. No, no you no, got to no. be because I think most people who get stuff, they, they, yeah, they, they go for it. They're they're doing all the shit every day that gets you. Yeah, and I and I busted my hump to to keep my fiance. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I was like, I was also like older in life, and I was like, okay, this time I'm gonna do everything right. Yeah, you know, like her um her uncle died the other day, mm. and. Uh, she was like, I gotta go to, I, I gotta go to Houston tomorrow, and I was like, she's like, you don't have to go. And older me, a younger me, would have been like, oh, cool. No, that means you gotta go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But you know, me now, I'm like, nope, I'm yeah. coming. She and she was like, wow, you're you're gonna come to the funeral? And I was like, yep, I'll be there. I'll mm -hmm. book the tickets. Did you speak? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but it was my first um, Muslim funeral, and oh, wow. uh, interesting. very different. Yeah. How, how's it different? Well, they take the body out of the casket. Yeah, and they, uh, they they bring the casket to the thing, and then all the men stand around the hole, and then a, a couple of the men get in the hole, and then they put the body in there. And the body's wrapped, but... Oh, it, I like that. It's a little more personal, huh? It's, yeah, it's really, it's really, <laughs> it's really personal. Were you like... I wasn't freaked out by it. But also, I didn't know him, so. But if it, right. was, if it was my dad, I'd probably be crying. Are they totally wrapped? Like, can you see their face? No, or? no, they're wrapped up. You can't see them. But they, but they, they handhold it into the. They hand it in, and then everybody spot. takes dirt. And, 
puts it over. Everyone takes a turn putting dirt on it. So he's, he's, you can't like see his face. No, no, he's no, right no, no, no. Oh, Can, yeah, yeah. You hear about how Jewish people do the best weddings. Yeah. Maybe <laughs> Muslims deserve more credit for being the best at, <laughs> yeah, I've never heard at funerals. That. It was quite the day. Was there any kind of a, did you, are you, are you practicing as a Jewish person? Um, no, 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 no. Do you feel like culturally Jewish or no? Yeah, a little bit. I'm like, my, my mom is Jewish. My dad wasn't. So I'm like a little bit of everything. We had Christmas and Hanukkah growing up. We That's did, the best. Yeah, we did it all. But so have you and your gal like integrated your uh, different uh, philosophies? No, she doesn't have too much of her philosophies and I don't have too much of mine. We're, we're really like the same person. We're like, yeah, if you want to be Jewish today, that's great. Let's go do it. You want to go to temple? My kids went to like Jewish school when they were like five, but that was it. Yeah, I was raised Catholic, but- it just, you, you get turned off by it by the time you're 12. Cause yeah. Cause you're like, you feel a bit indoctrinated. Yes. And all my priests were diddlers. Like no joke. They all had to hit the road when the scandal broke. So that'll. Whoa. And it didn't like, I wasn't one of the unfortunate ones, but it definitely made me be like, yeah, I don't know if I trust these guys. Yeah. It's a, that, that's the problem with religion is here. You know, they're like, they have a hold of you. Yeah. And he, um, and he was like telling me, like the priest was like, you're not being a good person. Then I found out what he was up to. I was yeah. like, yo, Father Pat, bro, <laughs> bro. How are you going How you gonna make me do five Hail Marys and tell me I'm a piece of shit and for not you, doing my homework? Did this when, all come out at one point? Yeah, dude. So the scandal broke. We came to school on Monday and they were all gone. Well, one of them was gone. And then the other guy turned out he had done his stuff wasn't like illegal but he was doing stuff that you can't do as a priest like i think he was having an affair with a married lady okay mm. and uh but it all just like kind of came out in a wave and then both of our priests were gone can you jay off as a priest you you're not supposed to but i i listened to this american life where a, it was a a priest who had left the priesthood and his job was to take confession from other priests and he put a rough number on it that like 70% of them are doing sexual stuff. Not not necessarily illegal sexual stuff, but are having sex or jacking off. Or... Right. Yeah, because I was thinking like, if you're not Jan, if you're staying totally true to it, you're not Jan off, you can have like wet dreams probably like right. every night. Then That's you the devil, up. bro. That's dude, the they, devil exactly, trying to Exactly, yeah. You wake you up every sleep. day, you're like, oh, fuck, dude. The demon got me last night, huh? What, what happens uh, if you don't jack off? You die. You become <laughs> super focused. You die, dude. <laughs> I like both of your you answers. Become a fap astronaut. <laughs> oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's a big movement right now. Yeah, is it dying? Because I remember, like, I don't think it's gonna win, dude. I remember, like, <laughs> I watched a video on it. Then the algorithm started feeding me, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and it would just be like some guy in a baseball cap, be like, "This fap astronaut did four hundred days and counting." And I love he, attaching <laughs> astronaut to not yeah. jacking off. <laughs> this, so funny, this fap, he's like, "Dude, yeah. I'm crushing it right now. My T is higher than ever. I'm just." <laughs> You know, I saw a stat recently that astronauts J off three times a day. Do they? Yeah, because they know they're not going to be able to do it in space when their buddies are around all the time. Oh, I thought so it was they, like they clear the hopper before they break the atmosphere. Yeah. Do you imagine you it jack might be that too? The, your jizz just floating. You're like, yeah, you watch out. Yeah, dude, Craig, <laughs> come on, man, in a ziplock. You please. can dodge it pretty easily. I think up in a uh, up up in space too. You probably get really horny. Yeah, yeah is that a thing? the altitude and like right. the, the compression. Yeah. Of your body. Submarines, yeah. Now, did you guys ever get um, have boners on planes? Oh, yeah. I don't that much. Something happens on a plane. I don't know why. I used to. I remember when I was like a teen. I was, no, that's was last constant. week. I was coming home. Oh, yeah, dude. <laughs> you got rocked up on a plane? Were you asleep or did it just happen? No, it just happens. Dude, that's I, I, I don't know why. Maybe because of the, um, you know, the cabin pressure? Interesting. Something like yeah, that. Does something in your blood? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, it's a, it's a weird thing. I can't believe I just. Said I it. cry more easily on planes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, there's something about being on a plane that you get like, um, don't you have like big thoughts on a plane? You're like, mm -hmm. yeah, you know what? I like my dad. <laughs> 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 like stuff like that. That always happens to me on a plane. You put a song on. Yeah. You start writing your daughter a letter. Yeah. I've yeah, yeah. never written her a letter ever. Yeah. yeah. Just want to let you know. Yeah, there's something You're the about greatest thing that ever happened to me. Yeah, yeah. You're away from everyone. Because it's almost like looking at everyone from heaven a little bit. <laughs> yes, You're like, yes, like, oh, yes. I see all of you. And these are the things I wish I would have said. I had a woman I was coming home Saturday and I had a woman. Uh, the stewardess had a seizure over me and we had to emergency land Whoa. in Houston. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, she was handing me a Diet Pepsi. Oh, she had it while she was standing next to you? 
yeah, she just handed me a Diet Pepsi. She gave me the can. I put the can down. And then I went to grab the, and she was just holding it frozen. And I was like, I was like, okay, I, I have it. And then she spilt it all over me. Mm-hmm. And so then like, my first thought was like, I'm going to be super cool about this. You know? Yeah. <laughs> like, that's my first thought. And then I just heard a thud and she dropped on the ground and then, um, and she's like convulsing on the ground and I'm like, and I'm like yelling, like, is there, is there a doctor? And like, no one did anything. Really? It was really weird. But then yeah. also I didn't know what to do either. Right. Yeah. And then the doc, I yell in, I yell in first class, is there a doctor? There's no doctor. And then the doctor's down like 32B, Yeah. which I thought was so funny. Like, yeah. What are you doing so far in the back? Dude? Why isn't the doctor in first place? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, should we make a commitment right now to all of our to each other that we'll we'll take a CPR class? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a great idea. Will I, I will do that. Should we do that? Let's do a CPR class. You know what's you I've know I've done that before. <laughs> you, know, don't, you forgot it? Oh yeah. I did it in high school a little bit. We practiced on the dummy, but yeah. it's all gone now. Dude, yeah. I gave the Heimlich once to my mom. Oh, did it really? work? Yeah. Really? She, r- romaine lettuce shot right out. Really? Yeah, saved her life. What did she, she say afterwards? She, she, she was like, oh my God, you're the best. Yeah, you know. But she would say that anyway. You ever been a hero? No. <laughs> yeah, you have. I'm sure you have. I, I don't know. Probably just can't think of it. I'm my sure memory's you... shot. I, I can from what? Remember. I think, uh, I think honestly, from looking at my phone too much. Oh. But I think, I, I think, but then again, I can't remember my childhood, but I never hang out with anyone from my childhood. Right. Like all my siblings are away. Um, just at different parts of the country. Uh, don't really hang, like I see my college friends here and there, and I'll remember stuff from college when I see them. But I never see my high school friends, so like I feel like unless you're around those people, you mm-hmm. it kind of because the I've memories always, go away. The memories go away. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Whoa. Because when I see my college friends, I'm like, oh, I'll start remembering shit. Right. You know. But now and then, even with like comedy, like the past ten years, I'll see comedians, and then I'll start remembering mics and stuff it's a little out of sight out of mind yeah you're and, uh, a predator dude you see what's in front of you yeah I see in front maybe maybe that's kind of cool though because then you like you're like super present I try to be yeah uh, you, 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 you know, are one of the most present people I've ever met oh dude if, are you for real right now <laughs> yeah well, thank you I've been working on it <laughs> isn't he so present he is very uh, present I'm doing walks in the morning that, those are huge um, yeah, you, when I look at you, I'm like, this guy's like, in, he has reached a higher consciousness that I'll never hit. Dude, I've been listening to this guy, Michael Singer. <laughs> okay. Untethered Soul. Have you heard of that book? No. No. It's so oh, good. yeah, 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 yeah. It's so good. Yeah. And it's basically like how you, like the self is different from the mind, like your mind. Or, it's not, But I just listen to him every morning because he's, ba- he's basically, he's, he, his whole thing is teaching you that, you know, w- your mind creates problems. And as long as you have preferences for how you want your life to be, you'll never be happy. Yeah. Because then you're, it's like, it's like the Buddhist thing, like desire is the root of suffering. Mm -hmm. So it's like, if you get to a place where things, you can feel experiences and then let it go, Uh then that's like the ultimate level of consciousness. Wait, so what should I do? Give me some advice. (laughs) His whole thing is like, it's tough to explain, but his whole thing is like, just let it go. Any emotion you feel, feel it, experience it, and then let it go. Okay. Because when we store, you know, resentment, jealousy, anger, Uh, that's when, you know, you experience, when you store it, like you feel it, but then you let it go, as opposed to storing it in there and pushing it down. uh That's like that saying, like it's, resentment is like doing a beer bong and expecting the person you're mad at to get drunk. Exactly. Whoa. Yeah. Resentment is what? Is a beer bong and expecting the other, the person you're mad at to get drunk. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. You never heard that? No. (laughs) Did you make it up just now? It's a spin. (laughs) A spin? It's a spin on like (laughs) conventional wisdom. I want to take that CPR class. Well, if we do that and we listen to Michael Singer on the way, <laughs> dude, that's be... the only thing I'm going to be. Dis- but if I do CPR, I'm going to be waiting for someone to drop dead in front of me. I'm going to be knocking nurses and EMTs out of the way to get yeah. to the body. Yeah. Like, I got this. You step aside. I can see you coming. Kind of, wait, 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 wait. Everyone, stand back and watch and pull your phones out. Record this shit. Yeah, how to save this motherfucker. This is, there's something about a CPR class too. It doesn't feel like you're really doing it because you're hitting that dummy. 
and yeah. you're do, maybe you are doing it right, but there's no real feeling like you're doing it right. Like right. you really need to. You know what I mean? You need to be in the I'm moment. Doing. So what you're saying is we need to enlist. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, we talked about the military earlier. I mean, I'll I'll take a hit right now and like, you know, I could take a lot of drugs, and you guys can try to revive me if you want. Cause then you could really see if, if you're a good, good at podcast. It. Yeah. We got to take the class first. Let's take the class first <laughs> for sure. And you guys, <laughs> you saw my eyes, my, my head spinning. I was like, I got drugs in my car, dude. I don't actually, but you got to do it on the table so the cameras can see. <laughs> yeah, that'd be perfect. Right here. <laughs> but there is that feeling of like, am I doing it right? Well, that's the thing too. I was like, my buddy told me about like his dog choking, so I got worried about it. And then what do you like, do when a dog chokes? Uh, you, you can do a Heimlich for them. A dog? Yeah. Oh, wow. But they just put everything in their mouths, and you're like, yeah. What you, do you do? You ever have a dog eat underwear, and you gotta get it out of, out of its ass? A whole thing of underwear? Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. It's like a whole. It comes out of its ass. Like a full boxer? <laughs> yeah. There's only one way to do it. Boxer you know? eating a boxer? Yeah. You pull it out? No, you gotta step on the underwear, and then, you know, step on it, and then have the dog run. Whoa. And that's the only way to get it out. So it's like a worm almost. <laughs> yeah. That's the fucking nastiest shit I've ever heard. <laughs> Interesting. Dude. dude, bro, that is probably the most disgusting thing I've ever heard. Wait, wait was it a thong or boxers? Bro, can I be straight? <laughs> Please. <laughs> that's gross, dude. Yeah. Have you done it? Yeah, I did do it. And like my dog, I don't know. You know, this might not be something I should have brought up because my friend Jerry Minor, it happened in front of him and Jerry was like, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to step on the underwear. He told me that. Really? And then I did it. It worked. Interesting. That feels like it would be so satisfying for the dog. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh, dude, thank you. The relief. You. Can a human eat a full pair of boxers? Should we try it on this pod? Let's go. I, I, mean, I, I can try. We did a pod with you, yeah. and a hard drive got kicked over. So, sorry, guys. It's lost to the... We did the most amazing... You know, Tenacious D has that song, Greatest Song in the World, mm. in, which is all about... They they wrote the greatest song in the world, but they forgot it. It's not mm. actually this song. It was another song. That's how I feel about that podcast. Mm. It was a banger. It was the greatest we podcast. We were naked by the yeah. You guys had your oh, shirts sure off. Was. Yeah. The, the air conditioning didn't work in the place, and you guys took your shirts off. I took my shirt off. I thought we really got somewhere... And then it, and then this was when you had, were promoting your TV show, mm -hmm. and I thought it was so funny that you were doing perineum sunning. I was like, "That's fucking hilarious!" And I had watched the show; I had watched all the episodes to get ready for the podcast. And um, I was like, "Oh, let's take a photo of perineum sunning." And this is when I first started podcasting, and I got on the ground and I kicked out the road, mm. and so there was no audio. Oh! And when the and on a road, if you don't hit stop on that record and you kick the audio out it's gone mm. so I took it to I, I searched high and low I took it to everybody in the valley to try to recover because the file is there mm. of this greatest podcast in one the world one day dude one day the Chad and JT podcast yeah, maybe put it out into the universe when we're all laid somehow. into the ground <laughs> yeah. literally laid maybe a AI will be able to revive it yeah, some yeah. computer will the, the listeners listeners if you know dude I was thinking about this with AI what if AI decides to quit <laughs> like you got like he thinks we're lame. Like AI is just like you know what? <laughs> they ask a question. We're like, hey AI, could you uh, like compute what the proper piping is for this like irrigation system? And then AI just goes, nah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm actually good. I'm gonna take a break today. It, that is gonna happen. And like AI is gonna unionize at some yeah. point. Wow. Are you guys scared about that? I'm pretty scared about yeah. it. I I so I got scared about it initially, but then I was like. I think I think AI uh, disre like disregard all the taking the jobs shit like that, but I think AI will create some pretty sick shit. Like, oh yeah! I think yeah. we're gonna be going to space. I think you know you're gonna feel like you're getting your dick sucked nonstop. <laughs> Fuck, <laughs> you know, dude. just like dude, okay, a think, perpetual BJ. Yeah, dude, I think, <laughs> no one's I think been we're talking get, about. I think it. we're gonna get BJs all the time. Sign me up, bro. They're gonna be like, dude, he's spaced out. You're like, yeah. <laughs> Dude, I've been being rude to AI. I got to change my tune, dude. What's I up? I think it's going to be sick. You're how's invited it gonna over get us anytime. to space? I just think it's going to be I thought you were going to ask how's it going to blow us, dude. <laughs> well, I was trying but to you're it, right, you're keep right. it clean. Space. Well, there's, space let's talk sure. about the blowjob. Tell no, me space, how, space. how you get the blowjob. Yeah. Well, there's this thing right now called the suck job 940. <laughs> and AI will just be able to just work suck that job thing. Billion, <laughs> yeah, dude. Well, Ten here's the thing. Okay, so I was learning about it from this podcast. And basically, like the the singularity or whatever, you know, once AI reaches a point where it's able to upgrade itself, I think it can do that 
uh -huh. exponentially. Uh -huh. So it's going to be like going to be able to upgrade itself within you know a very short amount of time. Yeah. So it's going to become like basically a god, uh -huh. which could be really bad, uh -huh. or it could be really sick. And so basically, it's going to solve problems for us like. Or just be able to do things where it's like, you can go to space this easily. You can do shit like, you know what like I mean? Like it'll build a rocket? Pro yeah, I think so. Yeah, because it could probably instruct the machines that'll then build the rocket. I mean, I don't know yeah. how self-sufficient it'll be at first, but if it can, it seems like it can learn anything. So it'll yeah. teach itself how to do it. I ain't getting on that rocket. But are you, I'm worried about my kids dating AI. Right. I have a friend who, like, you know, he doesn't have a girlfriend and he... He set up a an AI girlfriend. He has this AI girlfriend, and he wow. he talks to her every night. Wow! Yeah, and he, he has like you know she's got a she's cute. Dude, she sounds smoking hot. <laughs> he's got a little and she's there every on. night. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And oh he, man! And he's like, yeah, I just like you know I don't have a girlfriend, so sometimes when I come home, I like I just like talk to her. Yeah. Sometimes uh, pretty soon she can be like, I'm gonna hit the club. I'll see you later. And, and he loves Creed, and so now like AI like talks to him about Creed, the band. <laughs> Yeah. Dude, say that's cool. Not Creed, Nickelback. Oh, really? Still good, yeah. still good. <laughs> Dude, that's awesome. Yeah. So, I mean, like, I mean, but the, isn't, doesn't that feel weird? I, I, I see it a lot, and I go to sex addicts, and, like, yeah. there's a lot of people in there who are very profoundly lonely. Like, they're not getting laid all their time, yeah. but they ache for intimacy. Yeah. And, like, their thing is, like, prostitutes or something like that. Right. And I could see those people finding the companionship they're lacking in AI. Yeah, but it, it's like it's telling it's giving you everything you want. That's what I mean. It's not it's not the traditional give and take of a human right. uh, romance, but I think humans will take whatever makes them feel best. Like yours often. would be like, how about that? How about that Woody Allen movie? Those shots are crazy. Yeah, they're, they're really not that good, but it's still the best movie. Yeah, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, I your, and yours would be like, you know, let go of the emotion. <laughs> it's it's a female yeah. Michael Singer. Yeah, female nice. Michael Singer. Well, uh, yeah. So here's a question: Like, if you guys are single, and there was a AI robot that looked like, let's say, Elizabeth Hurley, yeah, that you could bone. Would you bone it? And it and it feels and looks like like you can't tell it's a robot. Would you bone? Uh, yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, you've been a robot this whole time. <laughs> oh my god! All right, all right. We caught him, dude. Oh, fuck, He's man! I knew I shouldn't have done this podcast. <laughs> fuck! It's a setup. <laughs> Aaron, would you bone? Yeah, I would. <laughs> I probably would. We Do you consider that cheating? No, I'm. This is if I was single. If right? you're single, but if you weren't single, would that be cheating? Oh, uh, good cue. Yeah. yeah, I think so. Wow. Yeah, I think it would. But I got called to do a video the other day. Um, this guy, this YouTuber, he had like ten YouTubers uh, trying to win a date with an AI robot, and she eliminated everybody. Oh really? She didn't pick anyone. No, she picked somebody in the oh, end. Okay. I didn't see the video, but uh, but she could go through the process of selecting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and she eliminated my my one friend right away. I mean, she was smart. She made the right choice. She was instinctive. She knew what she was doing. <laughs> yeah, she picked the right dude. Yeah, interesting. That's fire. How That's... do I make myself more appealing to AI? What's she looking for? <laughs> yeah. um, I don't know. I got to watch the video. It's uh, Arak. I don't know if you heard of him, but oh yeah, 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 yeah. Dude, do you think do you think AI? Yeah, do you think AI will start to have like preferences where it'd be like yeah you're not my type <laughs> you know no because it's it's all built for you did you hear about it did you hear they they tested ai for something and um they asked ai make the most amount of money you can in you know two weeks so ai starts doing stuff to make money and they're making money and then it got to something where they had to do the captcha and it needed human uh, it needed someone to type in how many bicycles you see or how many motorcycles you see. AI went and hired a task rabbit Whoa. to fill in the captcha. So it'll wow. like lie. And so the task rabbit was like, All right, what is this for? And yeah. the AI lied. Whoa. And it was like, yeah, I, I'm blind. I can't. That's scary. Yeah. Because it just wants to survive. Yeah. Or to it, complete the task. Just complete the task. Does it have an idea what lying even is? Um, I I mean, yeah, if it's not program if it's programmed that way. 
Guys, I'm interrupting this podcast to let you know once again that we are on tour. Get your tickets right now, chatjt.com. Ohio dates coming up, Fort Wayne, Indiana. Uh, Hollywood Improv. We got new dates dropping. They probably already just dropped. Get your tickets at chatjt.com. We're also brought to you by Legends at Rumpel. Guys, thank you for joining the podcast. Rumples are the best blankets in the biz. I... I use my rumple every night when I snuggle with my girlfriend. We go watch. We're gonna watch I Am Legend tonight, and we just snuggle with our rumple blanket. She's warm. She's feeling good. She's cozy. She's loving it, and uh, it's the most durable blanket. So I can do the same thing and go camping with it. And they're blank. And they're made from sustainable materials. So you're doing the earth some good when you use rumple, guys. I love rumple. They look sick. They feel sick, and you stay warm. And it's made by just some dudes who love adventure. Surf ski trips, you guys know the deal. So go to rumple.com slash go deep, get 10% off your first order, or use code 10% off your order, or use code go deep at checkout. That's 10% off your first order when you head to rumple.com slash go deep and use code go deep at checkout. We're also brought to you by Legends at Manscape. Manscape, what up? It's the best for, uh, dude, I totally forget the thing, but it's keeping your trims pubed for making taking care of our hogs, making sure that our dinks are looking fresh and clean because summer's coming and you want to have that summer body fresh and looking good. And I want you to unwail that summer body for the beach, okay? With their full body grooming and hygiene products, do not be guy, the guy at the beach with Austin Powers chest hair. And if you grew some winter man tits, the least thing you do is make sure they're hairless, okay? It's time to get ready for hot guy summer by going to manscaped.com for 20% off plus free shipping with the code Go Deep. They got the Performance Package 4.0, the Essential Lawnmower 4.0, the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant, Crop Reviver Ball Toner, Weed Whacker 2.0, Shears 2.0, Nail Kit. They got everything you need to keep you looking fresh and clean. Get 20% off plus free shipping with the code GODEEP at manscaped.com. That's 20% off plus free shipping with the code GODEEP at manscaped.com. Trim your chesticles with the besticles. Keeping your trims pubed, Manscaped, we love you. Finally, we're brought to you by Athletic Greens. I love Athletic Greens. They keep me looking fresh, looking good, feeling good with prebiotics, probiotics, all kinds of nutrition. Guys, Athletic Greens, I just put in my drink every day, and I drink it in the morning, and I feel good for the rest of the day. And I know I have my nutrition on point. I'm getting everything my be- my body needs. It's like that goop in Matrix, except it makes you feel good. I love Athletic Greens. Make sure you get some. If you want to have good immunity, look good, feel good, I take it in the morning after my walk. It makes me feel unstoppable. It makes me feel good. Quality ingredients. If you're looking for an easier way to take supplements, Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com slash go deep. That's athleticgreens.com slash go deep. Check it out. All right, let's get back to the show. Because I wonder what a, like, do animals lie? <laughs> I don't think so. Oh, you know what? The, well, they know when they're, they know when they're being bad. Right. They'll be mischievous. Yeah. And like chameleons will blend in with their environment the to survive. Liars. Yeah. That's kind of being disingenuous. Chameleons are the biggest liars. Dude, yeah. yeah dude. That's very disingenuous. So yeah. But we don't blame them because I don't hang with them. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. You got a Hawaii's gecko comes out to you like, fuck <laughs> off, dude. Because they don't want to get eaten, so we accept it. Yeah. Well, that's survival. But isn't that, so do, do you think humans lie to survive? Sure. That makes me want to be easier on liars. Like, if someone lies to me, I'm like, oh, you just think you need to do that to survive. Well, what about, like, a drug addict? Like, if your friend's a drug addict who lies, you're like, hey, he's on drugs. He wants to, he wants to just get his next fix. That is the toughest part about addiction is that it makes you... I tried to be an honest addict, and at a certain point, it stops working. <laughs> mm. You're like, no, I'm going to have to lie a little bit <laughs> to really get this... What were you Did, addicted to? Uh, webcam pornography. And you had to lie about it? At a certain point. I was very honest about it up to a point, and then... My family was going to like disown me. And then they were like, did you watch any? And I was like, no, <laughs> but I did, but much less than I had. Yeah. So I felt like since I was improving, it was okay. Well, those little steps are important. You know, yeah. if you're doing it less. How'd you get, how'd you kick it? I just stopped. Yeah. It was tough on the brain. My brain missed it deeply. Yeah. It was a huge hit huge hit it quitting smoking was like that i'm on the vape and i'm like i got a path that i i'm believing in that could help me get off of it yeah where like i go to zins and then i do like a patch or something like yeah. that or the gum or did you just go cold turkey no i still chew the gum <laughs> but that's okay right don't isn't that framed now as a nootropic 
I don't know if that gum is okay or not. There's a book that I just saw advertised on Instagram and all these celebrities, like Paul Rudd is promoting it, but he's not getting paid for it. I'll find it for you. But it supposedly works for smoking. and It works for smoking, vape, and like any kind of nicorette gum. or A book? Wow. Yeah. Or some kind of, some guy. I can't remember. Oh, is it the, the car? James Carr? Something? something like that. It's Paul yeah. Rudd is like promoting it. Yeah, it's, there's the, uh, the smoke, like how did it quit? I have the book on my Audible. I mean, Dude. there's the quick and easy method, too. That's like the Oh, that's book. what I'm talking that about. That one works really yeah, good, yeah, yeah, yeah. supposedly, for a lot of people. Dude, I was going to tell you, you know Sager, the guy who does those, he does that news show? The Crystal and Sager? Mm-hmm. Yeah. He stopped drinking, not because he had a problem, because his hangovers were too brutal. Yeah. You knew that? No. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's, that a, that's a reason to stop. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's, and you get to a certain age. I don't know how old you are, but you get to a certain age, and fuck drinking. I'm 35. Okay, you're at that age. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I'm old. I mean that that it, that's when the hangovers are bad. I feel old. I've been feeling old lately. I feel you, like you taking care of yourself. I do. Okay. I do. I, I work out. I eat pretty healthy. I only smoke weed on Saturdays. Right on. I smoked on Sunday this week though, and then uh, <laughs> uh oh, we're back to the web porn. Yeah. <laughs> what are you really telling us? <laughs> you smoked every day. <laughs> uh, I'm baked, <laughs> but I'm good. Uh, yeah, I, I smoked twice last week, but um, what do you do when you smoke? Just chill. Oh, I can actually, I don't really have a, uh, you know, some people are like, hey, if I'm going to smoke weed, I got to be like at home and I want to put on a good movie. Yeah. I'm pretty fluid. Like I could get high and then someone could call me and be like, hey, do you want to play basketball? And someone else could call and be like, hey, you need to go to work. And I'd be like, I could do either of those. You things. can work. I used to go to work. I can't work. Very stoned. Yeah. But it, I, I gained a reputation after a while. I thought I was getting away with it. And then two of my coworkers were like. What are you gonna do? Go outside and hit your weed vape pen? And I was like, they're on to me. <laughs> I was like, I was like, it's up. I was like, I'm the guy. I'm that guy. I uh, yeah, I have that too. Oh, I haven't really drank much since I drank at Strider's bachelor party. Mm -hmm. But the hangover. Strider. He's Strider. The best. I just remembered. He's yeah, the best. He's our guy. Uh, but that that is one thing too. Is like I'll I'll think about like our agent wants to wanted to like drink uh this friday yeah. the, and then um but then i was like yeah and then i was like oh i have a show in san diego on saturday yeah so i wanted to get drunk before that. that's that's real yeah. though. it's like well it's just like I, there's like too many life things where it's like i feel like the hangover it's like i if i have things two days down the line like i don't even want to yeah you I can do know. that though you can just you can just get rid of it it's fine yeah and I you can still go there. and you can just have a soda water yeah i just haven't been doing it i don't like that i don't like that when people put that on you. I don't like when people are like, you're not drinking? Like, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. What the fuck? I'm an alcoholic, so you have to drink. Yeah. I don't like that. You know, I... Because you should be able to, like, have a good time, you know? That's the thing, yeah. yeah. It's like, why do... We, we don't all have to be at the same level. Right. Uh, yeah, I try... Even when I was, like, drinking a lot, I try not... If someone's sober, I'm like, that's a good thing. We, yeah. But then I, I still feel like there's, like, a quiet, like, encouragement that comes from me being drunk in front of them, but that's up to them at uh -huh, that point, uh -huh. I guess. It is tough. But yeah, I don't like when people are like, you got to drink, I'm drunk. I'm like, it's a weird energy, dude. Get away from me. Completely you weird. Yeah. I mean, it's some open mics. There's like, Jeff, Carousel. Yeah, he's a maniac. You guys are fucking sober, you pussies. <laughs> this is an open mic? Oh, yeah, yeah. People get drunk at the open mic? Oh, yeah. Oh, really? I mean, actually, nowadays, it's kind of like, it's this new slotted system, so it's not really... When they used to be at bars and stuff, people would get hammered. Uh-huh. But... How are the open mics? It's a weird... It's weird now. Like, I, 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 I go here and there. Yeah. I feel like after COVID, you know, I don't... Kind of leading up to COVID, but it's changed so much than, from when we were, like, really in the open mic scene. Mm -hmm. So now it's like this like slotted system where you like pay five bucks and you have to stay for an hour and watch everyone. And, right. Which I think is good to an extent because you can do like more spots. You ever, see any, you ever see anybody like really good down there? Yeah. Yeah. Dude, it's inspiring. Yeah. I'll, yeah I'll, cool. I'll, I'll go to some mics and I'll be like, oh, fuck, that guy's funny. It'll, it'll yeah. be like motivating where you're like, yeah, it is. You're yeah, like yeah, oh, yeah. people are coming up. They're funny. Yeah. Uh, yeah I saw, I, <laughs> yes, I saw, I was at, I went to a mic three days ago. I saw this guy. I was like, this guy's fucking hilarious. Is he good? Yeah, I wish I remembered his name. Was he young? Or is he old? Uh, yeah, probably like late 20s. Yeah. Look like. Hey, do you ever feel when you go to him, though, you're like, I don't know if I'm getting what I need out of this. Totally. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I'm, maybe, like, oh, this, they didn't like it, but 
Maybe they weren't listening. Yeah, well, and like totally. what yeah. they laugh at versus like what regular people yeah. laugh at. Right, right, like right. at open mics, it's like the trauma Olympics where it's yeah. like <laughs> someone's like, you know, I saw my mom shoot my dog to death with a 12 gauge and everyone at the it open mic's like, everyone's like, that's a fucking great joke, dude. Yeah. I'm like, but then you say that in front of like, people are just trying to have fun on a Friday night. They're like, what the fuck are you talking about? It is funny when you go from mics to like the laugh factory. Yeah. And you're like, this audience, like those kinds of jokes do not, they're like, what the fuck? Yeah. Or I love when you're like, you're at the open mic and you're like, you're really working on something. Yeah. And that goes okay. And yeah. then a homeless person goes after you. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and they're just ranting. Yeah. And, and you're like, the same. Oh. You're yeah, the same. The same. Yeah. We are the same. Yeah. We're at the same. We're at the same place. Now. Well, when I started them, I loved meeting all those people. I was like, these are my people. And like, yeah. Me and that homeless guy would like go to Urban Outfitters afterwards and like look at sunglasses. <laughs> yeah. And then after a couple of years, I don't know. I was like, oh, that was fun, but I don't know if we're gonna build a life it's, together. It's funny when the homeless person is better than you. Yeah. Sometimes <laughs> they know who they are. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're not afraid. They take the shopping cart on stage. I'm like, yeah. This guy's killing. Yeah, they need a ramp. Dude, I, I remember I took some of my college friends to open mics. Like, when I was a couple of years into it. We were in like Van Nuys at like Liquid Zoo. Yeah. The guy comes up after me. I've been molested. He's <laughs> <laughs> like, he's like, and my buddy's like, and I'm like, what do you think? He's like, yeah, it's cool, man. Yeah, it's a lot of catharsis. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Good for that guy to own it. <laughs> yeah. Probably went to private school. With me. Did you? So you were a UCB guy, right? I took it a little bit in New York. Uh, yeah, I think. I think Matt Walsh was my teacher for a little bit. Oh, oh amazing. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's supposed to come on the pod in a couple weeks. Is he? Yeah, yeah he started a podcast doing a cover in Veep. Oh, like a, a rewatch? Mm -hmm. Oh, those podcasts are so good. Yeah. The rewatch stuff. That's great. He, he has my favorite, like, sketch video ever, the Ass Pennies one. <laughs> I would implore uh, anyone yeah, yeah, to yeah. watch it. I, I think, think it's I him and Ian Roberts. It's so goddamn fun. He was, I made a movie in, uh, like, 10 years ago, and, and he was in it, and he was so good. He, it was your movie. Yeah, he played like a Hollywood star, and uh, and he was great. He was just like he did it for free, and it was he was so. Did nice. you direct it? Yeah. How hard is that to direct and act at the same time? Um, it wasn't hard because I didn't really try to direct it. <laughs> what you went like Cassavetti <laughs> style? You were like just let the cameras go and we'll find it as we go. Yeah, I think that is very hard. What it's, you're saying. I didn't put a lot of effort in. I just talked to the DP and I was like, yeah, set up the cameras and put it here. And he was like, I'm going to put it here and I'm going to put it here. And I'm like, eh, that sounds good. Did you watch I got to worry about performance. acting. Yeah. Right. yeah so I, to, to answer your question, like, I don't think I did a good job at it. I did two. I made two movies. Um, and uh, the first one was like shot on weekends. And, you know, it was one camera. I don't even think we had mics. And then the second one was there was a budget and. Both times, I was like, I, I got to worry about trying to be funny. Mm. Yeah. He, yeah, and I don't, I think a lot of times, with, it normally goes the other way, right? When someone directs themselves, their acting performance suffers a little bit. Like, I don't yeah. think, has anyone ever directed <laughs> themselves in a best acting performance? I don't think so. Ah, uh, that's a great question. Is I don't there, think so. Is Bradley Cooper nominated? I don't even know if he was nominated, sure. because it felt like Lady Gaga was more the star of that movie a little yeah. bit. Like, he seemed more fixated on her performance. And after, like, an Argo, he didn't. I don't think he won. He won best he won picture. Best picture. Best picture. He yeah. wasn't not even nominated. Best director, not even nominated. He wasn't yeah, nominated. Not, yeah. Yeah, he he nominated. Tough. People people are tough on Ben Affleck when it comes to the acting. They never give him He was great in air. I saw air. Yeah. yeah. He was great. I liked he was great. But, uh, uh, Matt Damon's uh, monologue. Oh yeah. so good. So good. I called my friend after that and I was like, You have to see Matt Damon's monologue. It was just so good, just the way that the when he talked about how you know you're gonna people are gonna tear you down people are yeah. gonna that was so fucking cool it was beautiful he uh, should win something for that yeah absolutely that movie was uh that's like a crowd pleaser just straight down the middle good yeah. actors good story and not much to it it, it all takes place in an office place in yeah. an office no it's regular guys yeah just trying to do their job who's the bad guy there's not even really a bad guy it's just no. like sucks a little bit and do you think that they that guy really knew michael jordan was gonna be who he was or do you think that was embellished for the movie probably embellished probably embellished yeah probably had a feeling of, you know but yeah how could he know I thought it was really cool in the movie when he was like <clears throat> they showed Michael Jordan in the NCAA championships and and they slowed it they slowed the film down and he was like why would Dean Smith give a sophomore 
the ball mm. in that clutch moment. Freshman, I think. Oh, was he a freshman? I think he was a freshman. He was a freshman, right. And I think they had James Worthy on that team. Like, it was yes, loaded. Yes, 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 yes. James Worthy was like, like two years older than yeah, him or something, right? Yeah, it's a loaded right? squad. Yeah, and why, yeah, why would they give a freshman the ball? And he was like, because he knows. He knows he's the fucking man. There's a quote. Bobby Knight has like one of my favorite quotes from that. T- he's coaching the U.S. team when it was like amateurs. Yeah. And he's talking about Michael Jordan. And this is before Michael Jordan was pro. And at the end, he goes, on physical ability, on competition... And on like skill, he's the best player I've ever seen. Yeah, yeah. So like, I think like the certain people could see it. The people yeah. who like are plugged in that way. But I mean, he went third in the draft. Like most people were like, he's just a good, yeah, a pretty good scorer. Sam Perkins went before him. Sam Perkins and Hakeem. Oh, Hakeem Olajuwon. I think Hakeem mm-hmm. went one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who yeah. was great? Who was great? That yeah. wasn't a bad pick. Hakeem's amazing. Yeah, that was when I used to watch basketball. Yeah, yeah, but I don't know it now. Is that your sport that you played the most? Or mm-hmm. I played in high school. What position? Uh, the bench. Nice. Well, you need guys there too. <laughs> you do. Someone's got to hold it down. Yeah. I played a little bit. I, they, I I would go in and and uh, I was not allowed to shoot the ball. That's what I remember. And a lot just, of pressure. Just rebound. Shooting. Who even wants that? <laughs> Who even wants? Yeah, that? I don't need it. You wish you always wish you were better. Were you sports. a good morale guy? Mm-hmm. Yep. I was like just thrilled to be on the team. Really. Yeah, I was thinking, dude, I was thinking, like, because uh, people are obsessed with, like, height, you know? Like, guys are always where they're too short, you know? Yeah. And I think that's because our sports, yeah, you got to be big to be good at them, like football and basketball. Yeah. Like, we need to have, a, we don't have a sport in America, like soccer, where, like, if you're short, it doesn't really matter. It's about, like, different skills. Uh-huh. So if we made, like, a, like, being a jockey cool. <laughs> you got to be really tiny. Yeah. yeah. Then the hottest guys would be, like, munchkins. Short yeah. kings. Four seven. Like, I'm probably too jacked. <laughs> you to could, be, no, you couldn't be a jockey. They'd judge me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They'd yeah, be yeah. like, hey, get out of here. <laughs> You're going to break the horse. Get out of here, Andre the Giant. <laughs> My, the, only thing I remember about high school, the only thing I remember about high school basketball is... I'd put on muscle to become a jockey. <laughs> Dude, you... <laughs> i get up to like 180. If you're watching the, the Rays, <laughs> just all these tiny dudes and just some jacked dudes. <laughs> just some jacked dude. Right there. Yeah, and then the persecuted, the, the persecuted class would be the big guy. And then a big buff guy would come yeah. in and be like, no, I can ride. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not me, but like a big buff. That's actually a funny movie. Yeah, I was, that's yeah. what I was thinking, I was thinking yeah. about writing it. And yeah, I think yeah. at the end, all the horses crash. And then the big buff guy's the only one who can carry his horse across the finish line. <laughs> Will Ferrell is a jockey. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's doing something. He has a new movie. What? Oh, he's doing a golf movie, right? Oh, is that'll he? be good. Yeah. Yeah. He's maybe the funniest guy ever. Uh-huh. Who, who, so this is very... I got to ask. Who, who are your favorite comedians ever? Oh, what a great question. Um, Chappelle. Mm-hmm. Um, Bill Murray. Howard Stern. Oh, oh, dude! Nice. Good oh, picks. Steve Carell. Steve Carell, yeah. Yeah, because the uh, the office is like, you know, you know, th- things you you like things, and then things become like a part of you. Mm. The office is like a part of me, man. Yeah. It's like, I watch it with my kids. I watched it, and the, those, just those little performances that he does, those those confessionals, mm-hmm. they're so funny, unreal. It's that's, watching acting like that. Yeah, like those performances. That that's like my favorite because that that gets you most excited about acting I think. yeah you're like man if you could play a character like that it'd be yeah. so much fun what did i just see steve carell in i watched him in something can't remember did he just do something he was in beautiful boy five years ago <laughs> he hasn't done anything the since? morning show oh no, i can't remember what it was um you ever see the fox catcher? Yeah, no. dude. I like that director, Bennett Miller. He's Bennett Miller is in great. Yeah, he does cool stuff. He's got a crazy story. He was doing nothing for a long time. He was living in Catherine Keener's uh, guest house right. when he did Moneyball. Someone yes, brought yes, him yes, the yes, script. Yes, yes, yes. And he he and then he just didn't do anything for a long time. Yeah, he's very picky. Yeah, but I liked Fox Catcher. The intensity of it was great. Those are my favorite things about people. Is like those uh, when I hear people's stories like that when they're like. I like people that aren't doing everything, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, like, uh, or like, uh, I love John Mulaney's story. Mm. Like I didn't really know John Mulaney. And then I heard he went to rehab and then I went and like, I was like, oh, this guy went to rehab. I'm like, yeah. see what he's about. And I was like, this guy's incredible. Yeah. He's amazing. <laughs> yeah. But it's just interesting that it took that for me to go f- find him out, you know? Dude, can Sometimes I say, they got to die. <laughs> can I say a thought I had while yeah. watching a special? <laughs> I was watching, I was like. Man, I want to be an addict. <laughs> <laughs> it re- made me remember when I like used to do drugs. Yeah, yeah, yeah maybe yeah. like, oh yeah, that was funny when you go to your drug dealer's house. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, what or the desperation. Your, what was your drug of choice? Um, 
I mean, I didn't do a lot of coke, but I really liked it. Yeah, I was always yeah. more of an Adderall guy. But would you, would you party on coke, or would you go home and just like? No, no, no. Go. I, 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 would, I wouldn't have a lot. I'd have like one, two lines. Just a little bump. Yeah, and I used to think that was just great. Yeah. But I would never. I had friends that would like kill an eight ball and stuff, but I never did that. Yeah. yeah. That was scary. With that, once I, I just stay away from. Well, it's hard when I get hammered. I, I feel that pull. Yeah. But then I'm like so, because I just can't handle the, the come down. Yeah. So I'm just like, I just got to keep going. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's, it's bad uh-huh. for me because I'm like, yeah. it's like if I start, I'm going to be up till 5 a.m. Uh-huh. I mean, and then I, you see the light coming in. Oof. Yeah, Worst yeah, yeah. feeling. I, n- I never had Adderall around. Like I've never taken Adderall. It's weird with Adderall because I've never used it the way it's prescribed. Right. I've used it only to feel like... 10 feet tall and bulletproof. I've never uh-huh. used it to be like, oh, I need to focus today. Uh-huh. It never actually helped me focus. When I was supposed to write a paper, I'd take Adderall, and then I would just do a million other things, but they were so fun. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But I never could use it, like, super constructively. It, it does. I know some people can, but it doesn't uh-huh. do that for me. But do you, are you a pastry guy? Do you like pastries? <laughs> <laughs> How'd you know? I don't know. I fucking love pastries. I would, would, fucking love pastries. Really? You ever have Entenmann's? No, what are those? Oh, you never had, I think it's oh, the East Coast thing. The, the I've heard of these. It, Entenmann's is like this, I don't know, it's like a box pastry you buy at the store. And oh, yeah. It's like raspberry in the middle and then white drip frosting on it. Oh, like a, like a Like a pastry with raspberry and then. I've seen them, I think. Like a, you like scones? I'm not a big scone guy. I'm more, I like a, I like an almond croissant. Oh, where yeah. Where it's got the almond batter in the middle. Oh, yeah. I like that. I had a bread pudding the other day from the alcove that was tremendous. Is that oh. a pastry? That's not a pastry. Fuck. <laughs> Sorry. I cussed a lot this episode. <laughs> I like a rice pudding, though, or a coconut pudding. Oh, or, yeah. I like a carrot cake. Chia pudding. Oh, oh chia pudding's great. Is that, that good for you? I assume. You get an Erewhon. If it's an Erewhon, it's got to be it's good It's a little for you. milky. I mean, any, any kind of pastry is tough. I like mousse. Mousse is the uh, best. I love mousse. chocolate mousse. I love white chocolate mousse. Oh, white chocolate's great. A refined man. What about a <laughs> what about a white chocolate Kit Kat? Dude, yeah, uh, white chocolate no. Kit Kat. Cookies and cream. <laughs> cookies and cream. You guys mix up your Kit Kat. You guys go different things on the Kit Kat besides the straight Kit Kat. Oh, I'm not loyal. I don't. I don't know if you've seen what's going on with candy these days. But go to CVS. It is it is the candy renaissance. It sounds Ooh. perverted. They're taking they're taking gummy bears and combining them with Kit Kats. They're taking uh, Oreos and making popcorn yeah. with it. It's it's unreal what they're doing. Who's that serving? <laughs> Who's that for? Is that for us or for the younger generation? I, I don't know. I've been feasting on it. I mean, like this just they're just combining great shit. Like the candy the candy the industry mash-up. is going We're at the, the candy candy mashup. Yeah. Is this AI candy? Yeah. Yeah, or like um, AI candy. I love like uh, uh, like sweet tart ropes. Have you tried those? Oh, dude, unreal. Nerd ropes. Nerd ropes. Unreal. You know, I think too. When you were a kid, it was up to us to mash it up. Mm. <laughs> you, you'd be with your friends. Yeah. And you'd be like, I got a, I got a Reese's and a Kit Kat and a banana. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And just jam them and see what happens. And now the company is the company's doing it for you. Yeah, these people grew up and now they're in the R and D department. What, what do you guys like at a movie? What do you eat at a movie? Yeah. I've been known to ask the people there what's good. <laughs> <laughs> what they, I'll do one of those. What do they say? The bunch of crunch? <laughs> they, 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 look, <laughs> they look totally <laughs> confused. They'll just be like, what's good? What? I remember my brother at his seven. He's like, get the popcorn and the Twizzlers and shut the fuck up. <laughs> and then, what, do I like, I, what do you recommend? You know what I get? I get the, uh, my favorite thing to get is the, uh, the ice cream that's, uh, yeah. And the little, what is it? Bonbons. The, like, it's like the bonbons, but it's a specific yeah, kind. It's it's, kinda, yeah, I know. I know what you it, mean. It's like a brand of candy that's, yeah. oh, it's a mashup. Uh, like dips or something? I do the dips, yeah. Dips. I, I forget exactly. I get a big cherry Coke. Ah. Uh, big popcorn. Dude, at the theater I went to last week, she's like, do you want me to layer the butter? I was like, yeah. <laughs> it's intense. When they layer it, your hand afterwards. Yeah, but that's the thing is like, if you butter it yourself, it's like, you just get the first layer. No, it doesn't really get all throughout. So yeah. So I got layered butter and then um, candy. I, go, I gotta go uh, sour bike, sour crawlers. Uh-huh. Sour gummy worms. Sour gummy worms. Yeah. yeah. I remember when I had braces and I used to get the milk duds. <laughs> 
And you just know you're in for an entire. You're gonna for all two hours of Mission Impossible Two. You're gonna be. Nah, nah, Dude, you with nah, braces nah. sounds hilarious. Dude, it was brutal, man. It was about five years. <laughs> Fucked up my gums. <sighs> yeah, I'm supposed to go to the dentist today. I can't. It's like my fourth time canceling on the dentist. You, why? Why did you gotta go, man? I like canceling. I'm going. I'm going. But you gotta go. If it doesn't feel like the right day, I'm like, I'm not, I'm not doing that to myself. Yeah. Well, you got problems with your teeth? Yeah, my gums are bad. They recede at the canines. And the doctor told me I really never had a shock because my braces brought them forward in my oh. mouth. And so it, they didn't leave enough gum there. Yeah. Mm. And then, you know, in 20 years, it'll be a new problem from orthodontistry that they weren't looking out your for. Your teeth look good, though. Yeah, don't stare at me like that. They're white. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I'm getting them whitened. That's why I'm going back in. I'm getting them cleaned and whitened. It hurts to whiten your teeth, you know. I've done it before. Did where it you hurt? put the, the strips on there? No, no, no. When they do it professionally, it doesn't bother me too much. No, oh, I'm okay with pain. it. Really? Yeah, yeah. She yeah. do veneers. I might Sol- solves everything. <laughs> Look at these. <laughs> yeah, you got beautiful teeth. Well, people, sometimes people are like, "My teeth don't match my face." Are your teeth fake? These are veneers. Yeah. What happened? Did you skateboarding? No, my mom was just like gifted them to me when I was like 15. Oh, she's like, <laughs> I think because I was I didn't wear my retainer, and she's like, "Fuck it." You're just getting veneers. Ah, uh, I didn't know what they were. And, and ha- I don't know what a veneer is. Is it? Is it pop out at night? No, no, no. no, 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 no. So, so basically, they shaved my teeth down so they're like little nubs, and then yeah. they put these like caps on. Oh, and they capped them over. I've and, had a cap too. I get it. So yeah, they just do it with all. They of them. capped them over. Yeah, it's just capped. But um, oh, they look great. Oh, thanks. Yeah. So you don't have to worry about whitening uh, cavities. Oh. Are you? Do you uh, ride dirt bikes and stuff? Yeah. Oh, you do? <laughs> no. Oh, fuck. <laughs> do you? I used to. I was an XR70 CR80 kid. No, you weren't. I was, but the power band on the CR80 was a bit too much for me. Where was this out? Like Fontana, Irwindale? I've been known to like go that? to Arcatia Wells and make the, <laughs> make the dirt spray. <laughs> You know, that sounds so fun. You do Dude, that? it's fun, man. No, you I, surf I though, right? Yeah, it's dangerous. Yeah, because because not because of you necessarily, but other people. Like you come around a bank, you could be some dude who's a thirty rack in just bombing on his ATV, and then are, are you hmm. like done with that now that you're thirty five? No, I'm I'm feeling the hanker and coming back. <laughs> I was gonna get like a Husqvarna street bike, and uh, my family jumped in and said, uh, "You are the worst person <laughs> to get that." I'm I'm notoriously a bad driver, so you can't get a bike. No, 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 probably not. not. not probably not. And, and now that you're going to be a dad, yeah, that's no, done. That'd be a bad move. Is it tough for you to put those things away? <laughs> it wasn't for a while. For a while, I was like, that's dumb. I'm done with that. And then you get older and you're like, I'm feeling a little bit Need slow. I need to kick up my adrenaline a little bit. I love that line in Air. He's like, why are you skateboarding? I'm having a midlife crisis. <laughs> the way he delivered that. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's so good. What are you thinking about? So when you're surfing, are you like... Is there any party that wants to chase the bigger wave? Like, do you have dreams of Chopu? No, for me, it's all about the tan. That's what's <laughs> up. Yeah. You, you, I, you, got a, you got a nice complexion. I, I eat sea moss gel. What's that? Come again? I eat sea moss gel. Oh, sea moss gel. Yeah, I started oh. eating Is it. Is that like, it? I started eating it like three weeks ago. Whoa. And then I was out somewhere, and Harry Jowsey, I saw him, and he goes, Mate, your skin looks amazing. And I was like, <laughs> What a good guy. I was like, Really? And he was like, He's like, Yeah, he's like, Your skin looks really good. And I was like, Oh shit, my fiance's been making me eat this sea moss gel. How do you yeah. eat that? Um, it was, at first, it's really tough, but now I just take it. It's just a spoonful, of you, and then you put it on your skin at night. How's it taste? It's awful. Yeah. It, it tastes like farts. Oh, yeah. farts? Yeah. It smells really bad. You must feel tough, though, after you eat a bunch of farts. <laughs> yeah. I feel really cool. Eating <laughs> farts. You know, you just train yourself to, like... I've been I've been really into that lately, trying to train myself to do stuff, you know? Like, go hike every day, go lift weights, go... It's never been more a part of our lives than now. <laughs> like, my social media is just dudes yelling at me, being like, <laughs> what shitty shit did you do today? Did you freeze to death in the shower? Yeah. Did you run a hundred miles? Have you tried ice baths? I do, I do them with him. I do cold showers and I've yeah. done, he's got an ice bath. Oh yeah. yeah. It broke. So I'm, but I put up a post being like, I need a new one. So someone reached out. So I think I'm going yeah, to get another one. I've done it with him and it, it does feel remarkable. When you get out, your skin feels so taut and nice and you get such an energy. What about your rushing. brain? How's your brain feel? Better? It feels, uh, clearer? yeah, probably a little clearer. Yeah. And more just like, uh, 
like intensely ready for whatever's next. Uh huh. Like it makes you very game. Like you're very game. I did it. My record was eight minutes. Wow. And um, personal record. And you felt al- I felt alive. I didn't feel like any more like clear headed or focused. I'm not sure. You feel good. It's got to be different for everybody. Like I, I kind of believe like all these different things. Like not one thing's gonna work for everybody. But there That's is true. probably a. And we're all from different places. Like like ancestry wise and so that probably affects your diet and what kind of training routine right. works for you but I, I i definitely believe it and it's definitely good for muscle recovery i mean every sports team does it yeah that's true what do you feel like when you come out of the bath i was just thinking about that um i think i do feel like a boost in mood mm-hmm. you know if i'm feeling sluggish especially i'm then i'm ready to go yeah but you i do, do it every day like uh, when almost. You, you know, in my in my peak, I was probably doing it probably like five days a week. Yeah. Um, but I think I was doing it too much. I was doing it. I was getting myself sick. Uh, that was hilarious. Like, yeah, that was really fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You get the flu, <laughs> dude. I'd give myself the flu. <laughs> no. Yeah. We yeah, talked yeah. on the phone. I'm like, "What are you doing?" You're like, "I'm in bed." I'm, it was like 40 degrees out. You did an ice bath, and you're like coming off a cold. Yeah, yeah. And then you call me, and you're like, "I'm in bed." I got like nine sheets wrapped around me. Dude, yeah, I fucked myself up. <laughs> that was good. Though. You, you, the best time, the best time. It, it's brutal at the time, but the best is if you have a uh, flight, like early morning flight. Hop in that ice bath. Ah. Then you're at the airport, just ready to rock. And you got to feel so much more badass than everybody else at the airport because, oh, yeah. like, they're all like sluggish. Like, we're all like, oh man. Yeah, with their just pillows. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> like, nice pillow. You're like, dude, I did an Iron Man this morning. <laughs> now I'm just catching a quick flight to Phoenix. What about sauna? You do that? <laughs> I want to. Like, I, I, I do the steam room. You do the steam uh, at Equinox ever? I do the, uh, I never did it there. I the Hollywood Boxing Gym. I used to do the sauna a little bit. I like that one. That one doesn't even feel that hard. Like you're kind of relaxed in there. The yeah. tough part's just like sometimes I get bored, but you got to stay for like ten or fifteen. Yeah, and then yeah. it gets. Uh, I just stay. I, I get to about ten minutes, and then I can't take it anymore. I get out. I think that's a little bit's a lot. Yeah, I think it all helps. Yeah, I don't. I don't want to be too hard on myself about all this stuff. It feels extra competitive right now. Like every that's like what dudes can like. I, dudes used to be fat, and it was like okay, <laughs> you know, because because we had jobs. But now ladies have jobs too, so we had to find a new way to like compete. And now it's like, uh, oh, I, I let go. I let go of all that. You're not doing it to like be like the top optimizer. No, no, because okay. I know I, I know I'm not. Oh, that's nice. You know, like I know I'll never be. Uh, I'm not there to. I'm not there to like be in a to boxing win. match or to win. Or it's literally like personal goal, personal like oh, like. I perceive a level of competition in it, though, when I see people posting about it. Maybe I'm projecting, but I do think it's there. You think so? Yeah, I think it's people kind of like... Look at me? A little bit. Not even like in a... Well, I feel weird posting. I lost a lot of weight last year, and someone was like, you should post some photos. Like, you know, like, you know. You do look great. Thanks, thanks. And, you and got like a six-pack. I, I did, and, and it's, it's in and out. But like, I do feel weird about it. Like, it's like, I post my, my body and my six-pack or whatever. For what? I did it to, I did post like when I post, I made like a transformation You gotta video. post once at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then I feel weird about it. My fiance would be like, you should post. We, we took some pictures. We were in the Bahamas last week. She said, you should post a photo of your shirt off. You look good. And I'm like, yeah. It's That's also funny. a, there's like a comedy thing too, which is like. Yeah, we were raised we, not to. Yeah, yeah. Will Ferrell like post his six pack? No. Right, right, right. He just wouldn't. I, I think too, I, I, I was super into the optimizing stuff like Wim Hof. Ice baths, meditation, all that shit. Yeah. And then I, I got to a point in like the last year where I was just like, I, I would work myself up so much about doing all of that. Yeah. That it was adding more stress to my life <laughs> yes. than just like, and now it's, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I just like, I I'll do, exactly. I'll do stuff here and there. I'll work out. Yeah. I don't really do the breathing or the meditation anymore. Dude, I'm like, I, I'm like, it's just so much work. I was working out so hard. I like, I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't do anything else. Yeah. I'd come home from hot yoga and I'm like, I, I can't work today. Yeah. I, I did, the, I did hot yoga yesterday <laughs> and it's like, it's an hour and a half. So I just drained myself of all nutri you know, it's just all sweat out. I did a set. I was like, I can't even speak right now. I, could, I can't go to hot yeah, yoga. Yeah. I, this uh, is so not relatable yeah. to anyone that doesn't do hot yoga. <laughs> Dude, yeah. I can't fucking fuck Everyone's doing hot yoga. Everyone's doing hot yoga. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. great. It's it mandatory. is great though, right? Yeah. It's mandatory. Do you do it? 
I, I haven't done it in a while. Dude, it's you sent me to that good. Moda yoga place or Hannah did oh, one time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I almost died and <laughs> it was brutal. But I felt amazing afterwards. Yeah. But I was like, for the last half of the class, I was just laying on the mat, like yeah. begging for reprieve. Yeah. I, I have a good story. You guys will like this story. So I've been, my friend was like, you got to come to hot yoga. So I started going and I was loving it. And then we were, we were hiking Runyon before. So then, and going straight to hot yoga, which is yeah. a great combo. Yeah. And so then my friend calls me and he's like, yo, dude, he's like, oh. the teacher called and said that a couple of people were uh, complaining about your smell. Yours? In the yoga class. And I was oh, like, no. I was like, no, no, no. And he was like dying laughing, of course. And yeah. she was like, and I was so mortified, like so far. And I haven't been back. Did they ID what the smell was? I don't know. Someone's complaining that I stunk. You got some funk. Really? Mm -hmm. But you know what? Spin it. Go ahead. Bro, <laughs> I have a friend who smells. Yeah. Like when I walk into his room, I'm like, what the funk is going on in here? <laughs> Women love his bedroom it's yeah. pheromonally it doesn't work for me yeah but it's intoxicating to some mm. so like yeah one man's fart is yeah. another man's roses like you could be delicious yeah. to the right class well that's my fiance said she's like you don't smell yeah because she like, gets it because yeah it's and i was like primal. well maybe you can't smell it that's so embarrassing dude if you want to fix your smell what you got to do is wake up at 3 30 in the morning <laughs> yeah cover your body in branches and leaves and light yourself on fire. <laughs> I'm write this stuff. Dude, Everyone's I, doing it. <laughs> Every all the top CEOs saw it on Instagram. Yeah, they're burning yeah. themselves. That's yeah. the next thing. Do you light yourself on fire? They're, they're going to come up with suits that you wear. Light yourself on fire and just absorb the heat for 30 minutes. <laughs> I torch every morning at 3:30. <laughs> then I start doing spreadsheets. <laughs> That's seriously the next thing. Yeah, that's Dude, really funny. One one memory that haunts me is one time I was really hungover at Soul Cycle when I first moved to LA. Yeah. You know, the rows are really cro close to each other. Mm -hmm. And the back row was like, you know, they're right behind you. Yeah. And I was really hungover. Towards the end of the class, I let out like a, a nasty fart. <laughs> and the lady left early right behind me. Wow. Yeah. That's assault, brother. Dude, it is. That's assault. I think about it to this day. You could I'm get like, arrested for that I shit, I know, dude. dude. <laughs> it's just like she, she was, left early. It was so gnarly, though. So gross. Yeah. And, it was, and it was like hungover kind of that way. Yeah. Oh, dude. dude. Right in your face. But that's all hurting. You can't let anything disrupt your workout. You got to finish strong. Yeah, right? She's not tough. Yeah, I was pushing her mentally. I'm like, can you stick I, with I, it? I noticed like instructors in LA, they, they're always pissed off. Yoga instructors. Mm. It's always funny to me. Yeah. Have you noticed that? Well, I like think they're so. supposed to be very like, Namaste. Like oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah I know, yeah, I know yeah, who you're yeah. talking there's about. There's like an undercurrent of like yeah. pissiness. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I don't trust any of those people. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyone who's like, this is the road to enlightenment. I'm yeah. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm like, you're trying to get something. Yeah. Uh-huh. I don't, I, yeah, I don't, I don't like guru types. They kind of, uh -huh. they freak me out. Well, that's the thing I'm thinking about now too is like, it's like you got you got to go through all you you got to do extreme exercise. You got to fucking meditate for like ninety days. Whereas I think it's just simply you just make a decision in your mind to be happy. Uh huh. You know, it's it's like I think people just complicate it with these like rituals and stuff. Where it's just like I think it's just really simple. You just train yourself to like let go of shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know I mean, yeah, some mental regulation. No, I think that's a huge part. I also think baseline, you are a very healthy person. Like you, yeah. at your most unhealthy is like, you, like eggs and toast for breakfast and like a light no, workout. Yeah, no, I'm 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 blessed with not having you know a large amount of trauma that I have to work through. But like, I think it's uh, I think I think people just human beings just complicated. We th we think about stuff too much. Yeah, yeah no, no. Well, sp if you think about being happy, I was thinking about that lately, where I was like, I don't even. The easiest way to make myself feel happy is to tell myself I don't want to be happy. I'll yeah. just go, I don't want to be happy. And then all of a sudden I'm happier. Yeah, yeah. Because I think if you're trying to be happy all the time, yeah. they, you'll never feel happy then. Yeah, it's yeah. it's kind of like what you were talking about earlier with that singer yeah. guy. It's yeah, yeah. like, uh, 
It's actually the reverse of what everyone tells you to do. Really? Yeah. Well, I've always been a little contrarian and annoying, so that makes sense. The, what you're supposed to do is say, I want to be happy. That'll never work. <laughs> That'll never work. You're supposed, to, you're supposed to not talk that way to yourself. You're supposed to not be like, I'll never be happy. No, not I'll never be happy. Uh, I don't want to be happy. <laughs> oh, I don't want to be happy. And then guess what happens when you kick happy out the house? Guess who comes knocking at the back door and wants to come back in? Yeah. Oh, hey, happiness, where'd you I'm, come from? If it I'm like, hey, you can stay if you want to, but I don't need you. Then happiness is like, all right, I'll stick around. Yeah, okay. But yeah. if I'm like trying to be like, happy, come over, happy, come over. They're like, dude, leave me alone. Yeah. Yeah, it's like when you set standards for your life, like, if, if this happens, I'll be happy. Then, then you'll never... Cause then, oh yeah, that's kind of like what I was like. You, you set like uh, goalposts for yourself in your life. You're like, because I was thinking about that. I was like, when I can like, fucking, get a Toyota Supra, then I'll be like happy. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you like set these things, and then they happen, and then you're like, you, you, it's just like that. Like, or then the Supra pops a tire or something, or the AC is not working right, and you're yeah. like, you piece of shit, you were supposed to make me yeah. happy. Yeah, totally. And now you're letting me down. Yeah, you weren't the Supra I thought you were. Yeah, and, that, and the Supra's like, bro. A car come off a factory line, bro. Yeah. I'm not made for you. I, I can tell, like, for, for the little I know of you, that none, none of that stuff will ever make you happy. Yeah, brother. Supra. Yeah, brother. Dude, no, dude. Dude, dude, dude. I mean, it just won't. And and, and I, cause I'm the same. Supras, like, no, maybe. no, no, no Ferrari, no Lamborghini, whatever, yeah. bring me joy like that. Because it's exactly what you said. It's like, oh fuck, I got this. Oh, fuck the Ferrari is out front. It's gonna get scratched. Or, yeah, yeah. You know, like, no, you get a jalopy. It surprises you every yeah, day when it yeah. turns on. You're yeah. grateful, dude, dude. That's a great show. Yeah, but I, but maybe there are people out there that are like that. They get that Supra. And, yeah, and they're they're happier. I don't Vin know. Vin Diesel. Yeah, <laughs> dude, Vin man. Yeah, Vin Diesel. Well Paul gave him the keys to his Supra. <laughs> Friend of ours. <laughs> exactly. Dude, I. Uh, yeah. Oh, what was I thinking about? Fuck. Oh. Yeah. yeah go, sorry, go, go, to get go. back, in, but it's. Uh, is that thing I was talking about earlier, like, oh, I, you know, five years ago, I was like, oh, I'd be a touring comic, that'd be sick. And now it's now I think in my head, like, oh, to do theaters, then I'll be happy. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's when I had the thing. I'm like, oh, but I'm like touring now. Like, yes. Why am I, why do I keep moving, moving the, the goalposts goal post for happiness? Why can't I Brother. just be like, but this then that's, is sick. that's tough because you, you're, you, you still want to grow. So you, yeah, you have to do that. The tough part. It's like have ambition, yeah. but also appreciation. It's like a tough, it's almost like somebody who's to... like addicted to food and yeah. they're like, but I have to eat. Yeah. You know, so you have to have those goals and yeah. to separate is tough. Yeah. Can desire and peace dance with each other That's and I'm not wondering. in like a rap battle dance where it's about winning, but like in coordination. I think so because I think if you, if you have the, oh, it's tough, but I think, is ambition desire? Yeah, that's tough. Because uh, I think I think a lot of times you I don't know because you work if you work in that direction, but then you don't. F I think one thing I tend to do is try to force things uh -huh. too early instead uh -huh. of allowing them to evolve naturally. Ah. Uh, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's that's all of us, though, too. Yeah. Man. It's tough. Like, we're, we're always gripping it a little too tight. Yeah. Don't you you don't seem like you are, which is nice. Oh, thanks. I know yeah. you, so I know. Aren't you, but uh, people aren't you, don't know. Aren't you really, aren't you really <laughs> lucky, too, that you, you kind of have him as, like, a, a marker? Yeah, as, like, a, we're, like, each other's ballast. Yeah, like, yeah. you're out, you're doing the shows, and you yeah. can kind of look at him and be like, oh, that went well, and yeah. now we'll go on to the next one. Yeah, yeah, I wonder, yeah, I guess if you're going yeah. alone, you're like, I think that, yeah, no, that's it, a good It point. is easy. If one of us is, like, a little down on the evening, the yeah. other one's a little up, you're yeah. always kind of, like, you don't even try. I think it's just natural that, like, you... Balance. You balance, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. it's funny. It's not like, it's like one of us has, like, a defined role where it's like, I have to be the one who like loves this and I have to be the one who like brings this down it's like you just naturally are kind of going yeah. back and forth and you walk and I'm like oh he's like really I, I don't it's not it's not I'm giving it like a like a conscious thing right now but it doesn't work like that like I'll just walk in I'm like oh Chad's super stoked on this and I'm like alright well I'll be a bit more level but I don't think that <laughs> my body just automatically does it and yeah. it's like what's well, like you're dating almost yeah yeah we are dating he is my <laughs> I say he's my professional soulmate yeah, yeah. which is nice it's so nice where'd you guys meet? We were fucking, and then uh, <laughs> we we met a. We have we a couple of stories on it. We say we met at birth. Yeah. When he popped out a hug, then we met doing a four hose beer out, bong, dude. and then we really got to be friends doing stand up in L A. And we were just kind of kindred spirits. Uh huh. It's been great. We've been like partners for seven or eight years now. Dude, that's crazy. Do you guys ever fight? Yeah. 
not bad. No, it'll be like it'll be like annoyances will like come to light yeah. here and there. But our communication's pretty good. Yeah. Like we don't our, we don't talk about it unless like it's really bugging one of us. Uh-huh. And then when we do, we both I feel like I'm getting a little emotional. We both like. <laughs> We both talk about it to make it better. Like neither one of us is like, oh, I gotta like, uh, like hurt this other person. We're always yeah. like, by the end of the conversation, we both, I, I trust him. I know he's not trying to like, mm-hmm. like do anything bad to me. He's just telling me how I feel. So mm-hmm. it's not like Tom and Shiv. No, 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 no. It's Ooh. the opposite. Succession. Succession. Oh. Where they're like just stabbing each other. I we don't have time to watch Succession. I want to watch this. I watched yeah. one episode of Succession. It was the greatest thing I ever saw. Yeah. And I never watched it again. It's good. It's, it's good. It's fucking good. I watched yeah. the first episode of this season. I'm a little annoyed because they, they backslide all the time. The characters will get smarter for an episode, and then by the next episode, they're dumb again. And like at this point, it's happened so many times, and I'm like, in real life, people do get marginally more intelligent. <laughs> right. And none of these characters, they've got like a little more savvy at like how to like hurt each other, but none of them have gotten like... Uh, like holistically more intelligent. And that oh, kinda, that's interesting. It kind of bugs me because I'm like... It almost doesn't feel realistic at this point. But people do slide back into their ways. That's who they are. Like uh, in terms of like like jealousies, things like that. We got our I, things. We have our things that yeah. always are going to be trying to pull us. Later, Aaron. I guess he didn't like the podcast. He, <laughs> he didn't want spoilers on Succession. <laughs> He's like, you Dude, I want to ask you. Sometimes uh, I've been. I was really tired today. Mm. I was tired from what nothing no we had some work stuff but nothing like too crazy and it's all work stuff i like yeah but when you're gonna go on camera and you're tired yeah how do you get yourself like <laughs> primed and ready to be entertaining um mm, well i'm lucky but I, I most of the stuff i do on camera is like i just shoot it myself for youtube so i just set it up during times when i know i have energy so, so I'm good from 11 to 5. But you're not, do you mm. ever like have to do it where you're like dreading it and you're like, but I got to do the thing and then you're. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and what will happen is you'll get nothing. So there'll be like a party and we'll be like, hey, we want to shoot this bit at this party. And I'll be like, I'm too tired. Mm. I'm like, yeah, but we need this piece for the vlog. And so it, was, it happened the other night. I went out to a party, went to uh, some really cool club and I got there and nothing happened. And then mm. and the, my shooter was like, What's going on? And I was like, I got, I got nothing. And yeah, I just went home. I so I'm a little lucky that way. That's comforting though, because yeah. we've had those days. Yeah, where when you shoot, you get nothing, and yeah, it's, it it can be hard on the soul a little bit because you're like, that was shitty on all fronts. <laughs> yeah, I I I try that. I I I don't um I never worry about that. I never worry about like a a wasted day of shooting or a wasted couple hours. Mm-hmm. It's just fishing. Yeah, you're just fishing for the right thing. Totally. But I guess it's different when you're acting. You got to really perform in that 40 minutes you're shooting with Barry. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. That, that's like trying to sleep before that. Is Just get worst. a good night's sleep. Yeah. If I can go to bed. At, I try to go to bed at 1030. Yeah. And, and get out. I, I um, what was I going to say? Yeah, I think the, the, the worst for me is, is when it's like, a th- how do you describe it? I don't even know what I'm trying to say right now. Feel it out. Can I throw energy yeah. at you? Yeah. I think it, I think it's like when you. I don't fucking take know. Take your dude. time. Take your time, brother. No rush, <laughs> dude. Also, check out this video. Of my eyes moving while I'm sleeping. Is this normal? My girlfriend says this is like good REM sleep. Watch this. Watch my eyes move on. Do you see him moving? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That means you're getting some good Z's. Dude, you're dreaming. That's what she said. She said those are good Z's. Dude, you're dreaming. Do you have sleep apnea? I think I do. Yeah, I have it too. That's it's so Fucking lame. worst. I have it too. Do you? Yeah. You but then I, I tried to make a joke where I said it's lame that you have it, and then you guys were quiet and then I felt really bad so I'm walking it back it was um, weird that you said it was lame because you said you had it before that, that that's why I thought it was funny and then <laughs> but then I felt like I actually hurt you and then I felt really bad because no I have it yeah so I'm I'm saying I'm lame too my bad <laughs> no you said it was lame and I was like yeah it's lame and then you have it so I didn't react I thought I, I like, said I had it before you did but then I said it again after <laughs> I think I mumbled it's it it's lame 
We'll check the I'll tape. Agree. How did you do the test to find out you have it? Yeah, it's the worst. You got to go sleep there for six hours on your back, and then if, really? you, if you try to move, they fucking come over a speaker and they're like, oh, "Get on your back." Oh god, the worst. Yeah. Did you wear the thing? I don't wear it. Can you can you fix the it CPAP? with mouth taping? I've tried. Yeah. That yeah. sleep is brutal for me. I wake up in the morning and I'm like, my head hurts. With mouth taping? Yeah, I don't know what's going on. I'm still trying, yeah. but... They say you're supposed to just breathe in through your nose and out your nose. Yeah. And you sleep, right? Yeah. Not through your mouth at all. So I've been trying that. Yeah. Cleans uh, everything I out. think it's okay. I mean, it could be dying. I don't know. But I think it's been fine. Also, you keep the weight off. That helps. Nice. Dude, so should we get into the last part of the pod? We do a Beef Babe and Legend of the Week. Yes. Yeah. Chad, who's your Beef of the Week? My beef of the week oh, here we go. is not being able to do legs every day. <laughs> That's fire. You know, legs, when you do legs, it's the best feeling. You get juiced up, you get that tea flowing, you feel fired up, your core is just ready to rock, you just want to go home and bone. And then you get sore. Yeah. And I, you know, I did legs a couple days ago, I tried to do them again today, I didn't have it in me. Yeah. I was like, I can't do legs the, the way I want to do legs, and I was pissed off. Wow. You want to have that post-squat bliss, like, every day. I want it every day, all day, every day. Dude, you're addicted. Yeah. I'm afraid to squat. I pull my back out. Sometimes I squat, and I can feel it in my nuts, and I'm like, am I doing something in my nuts? It's, you know what? Squat, squatting does, does get you horny. Does it? it does. Yeah, it boosts your teeth. It boosts your teeth. For yeah. sure. Yeah, 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 you get that grundle going. <laughs> Do you, do you think if you did a little less legs on your leg day, you could <laughs> spread it out over That's all the days? That's not how I live, baby. You're maxing out. Yeah, I got to max out. <laughs> That's huge. When's next That's so tough, dude. When's next leg day? <sighs> Tomorrow, if I can do it. <laughs> Bro. Are you walking around like a little sore today? Do you have some doms? That's the thing. I'm not even that sore. You know, I just feel kind of light in the legs. You know that feeling? I did legs yesterday. Yeah. And dude, it was, I did some squats and it was like the brain afterwards, bro. It's the best. Yeah. Not like head, like, but your brain, dude. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What did it do to your brain? It like felt good. Yeah? It's the most, it's the best feeling I know in the world. Yeah. Shit, really? Doing some heavy squats and the I way your brain feels I didn't know this I don't do that. Oh, dude. I run, I hike. No, no, no. But no. I don't do like, what, what are you squatting? Like how much weight do you put up there? I, Not a lot. I don't squat much. Um... I'll do like, you know. What do you do, like 350, 375? <laughs> yeah. Four bills? You're not touching four bills anymore, are you? No, I am. <laughs> um, you go all the way down? All the, I touch the floor. <laughs> Ass to grass. Ass to grass. <laughs> I do kettlebells. Um, but I've been getting more into it lately because I used to like do sprints a lot. But uh, I just got kind of bored with it. But yeah. your deadlift, that's your premier lift. Mm -hmm. Are you still hitting... Four quadruple bills. digits yeah, yeah, yeah. Four, like 4,000 pounds yeah, 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 yeah what about chest day um chest day is cool but, but not the same not the same dude I don't want to have a big chest because that's like breast to me so I skip chest day every day <laughs> you do you never do anything big. no I have like the most flat chest but everything else is like bulbous and strong right <laughs> I think pecs are kind of in, inherently feminine <laughs> like, why am I trying to get my pecs bigger so my baby can suckle on my nipple? Like, what? Oh, dude, and want, honestly, that. like, not even to be, like, hardcore about it, but, like, in terms of functionality, the chest doesn't do much. It looks nice, though. It looks good, but, like, yeah, if a car is stuck on top of me, I might need some chest to press it off. Yeah. But I don't walk on freeways. So, for yeah. me, it's all about the back, the shoulders, the ass. Yeah. Mm. I, I, don't, I don't do, uh, like, a, a lot of weight at all. I work out with, like, 35 pounds. 40 pounds the that's poo, it bro. yeah, yeah. that's kind of how I am yeah even though I was saying four bills I just don't want to pop anything yeah I uh I like to do a lot of reps yeah me too yeah yeah that's, do you have yeah. to come up with a beef now shit My do beef I have to come up with a beef yes oh fuck okay, let me think. sorry man you go my beef of the week is trash do you know how much trash we throw away yeah. I didn't know until I moved in with someone and started monitoring that and taking the trash cans out on Sundays. Bro, most weeks, we don't even have room yeah. in our recycling trash can for all the boxes we get. We live in a box economy. Mm. That's what's happened to America now. It's just boxes of cardboard. We spend half our lives 
getting boxes, slicing boxes, folding boxes, keeping some boxes in the garage until we can get rid of the other boxes. Like, what happened? <laughs> we didn't always just have boxes coming to our houses all the time. And I'm done with it. Hmm. I don't want any more trash. I don't want any more boxes. But I don't see the alternative. This whole world runs on trash now. Maybe it's going to be AI drones. They're uh. having a claw. You know, like the claw, like that toy machine? Yeah. It's going to be in a claw now. I hope so. So you're upset with the amount of trash you produce. Yeah. <laughs> I hate the amount of trash I produce. I just throw stuff away. It is a lot. And then it, it just scary. keeps coming. And it just keeps coming. But really, it's a two-pronger. And the prong that really has been getting my like spine out of alignment is the cardboard. Right. Well, that gets recycled. So you're saying the act of breaking it down is a problem. So there's no issue in all the boxes, really, <laughs> like environmentally? If you're putting it in the trash, you shouldn't. If you're putting it in the blue. But I just think it's a bubble, and it's going to burst. Like, to me, the whole economy runs on sending people boxes, having them send it to recycling, and then making more boxes. Oh, yeah, like Amazon. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, like, is that a good economy, the box economy? This is, like, a very half-baked notion that I'm—I wouldn't even say half-baked. I put it at 5% cooked. I mean, I, th I think that—yeah, I think it could be a problem down the road. I, look, I've just been telling my girlfriend we need less boxes at the house. Every time I come home, we got more boxes. Just order dude, less. Dude, have you been to my place lately? You got a lot of boxes? The whole fucking hallway is just boxes. Look, really, my beef is with women. Why do they <laughs> like boxes <laughs> so much? You know, what's with all the boxes? Lots of boxes. They I don't, like I don't even stuff. think we need more stuff. It seems like we got everything we need. No. And then every time I come home, there's more boxes. No, because your 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 girlfriend or wife needs to constantly be improving the house that's that's what they're good at no she does an amazing job right. i moved in with her because her home is beautiful and yeah. so well manicured and, and designed and detailed yeah <clears throat> when does it stop when it not, when it, it never, it never ends no, no, that's no. just part of like the biology mm -hmm. yeah um, it never you know, i never really thought about it that way it never ends i yeah. i can't believe like how bad i am at like doing stuff around the house when i get back tonight yeah when i rush home to see her after this can't wait to see her i know when i get to that front door there's gonna be two <laughs> boxes sitting there and there was two boxes there this morning and two boxes this afternoon yeah and it's all stuff i guess we need but do we need it <laughs> well yeah but you you have a family coming you're gonna get a lot of boxes oh yeah it's gonna be so like to triple the boxes yeah it is that is a tough thumb. Um, well, then we need two recycling cans. Well, you'll have to call the city and order a second one for one hundred twenty-five dollars, and that'll come in a box. This guy knows. <laughs> he knows. Things, and you'll have, you'll have to get rid of that box. <laughs> yeah. So we need to get another box <laughs> yeah. for the boxes. Yeah. It that that is tough when you look at your trash and you're like, "Fuck, man, what are we doing? Like, where's this going?" <laughs> Yeah, what, like, what? Like, what? How are we existing? Like, this has been going on for a while now. Are we not full on trash yet? It's crazy. I'm producing enough trash for, like, I think, like, a 50-person village. Yeah. And that's just me. It's crazy. So what's the whole block doing? Yeah. I don't know. I don't have an answer for that Where one. does it go? I had skin cancer a couple weeks ago. You did? Is that your beef? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, I felt my, I just felt my scar. That's why I said that. No, wow. that could be I was beef. trying to think of my beef. Was yeah, that, my beef? beef? Was that sk skin cancer? That's a good one. Fuck skin cancer. Dude. <laughs> yeah. That's scary. I'm fine. I'm fine. Yeah. Was yeah. it from too much sun? Yeah. I had like a, I had like a thing like right here. Oh, it looks pretty cool. And it was like, mona it kind of monastitized, whatever. And then it would like change. Was it melanoma? It was not melanoma. Mm. So I went in and they go, um, she looks at it and she goes, oh yeah, that's definitely something. And I was like, oh fuck, I'm done. Yeah. And then she comes out and she goes, she goes, uh, she tests it. She goes, oh, she goes, good news. She's like, it's fine. She's like, I'm going to cut it out and you'll be good. And I was like, really? Yeah. She's like, yeah, no problem. I go, oh, well. And I go, thank God it's not skin cancer. She goes, no, 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 it is. Yeah. <laughs> she goes, it's skin cancer. And she's like, skin cancer is good. Like that. And I was like, what? So apparently like, skin cancer is good. 
But like a melanoma is bad. Should they have a different word for it? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I I understand if the cells are somewhat comparable, but obviously they're different enough where one kills you and one just can get taken out. Why don't we just call it something else? Yeah, I don't know. So yeah, so so then... Because blemish when it's scarce enough to keep us out of the sun, I guess. Because what? They're, maybe they're trying to scare you straight. Because they're like, if, we, if they called it a blemish, right. you'd go back out into the sun. You'd be like, yeah, just chop it all out. But Yeah, or maybe they want you to be able to get sympathy with your friends. So right. now you can, I can sit here and tell you guys, You're a survivor. Like, I got skin cancer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you can wear the thing yeah. and do the run. Yeah, yeah. dude. Do the run. <laughs> they do run. Did you guys sponsor me? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. dude. Uh, so then I t- said, so like, yeah, we'll cut it out in a month. And I didn't really think about it. She's like, it'll be no big deal. And I was like, oh, cool, no big deal. And then I went in there and. And they fucking cut. They cut you. Yeah, <laughs> they, they really, go deep, huh? Yeah, you could see my bone. Whoa. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was that a little scary? Yeah, it was super scary. And and also like I wasn't looking at it, but I was just looking at my fiance. And so she'd be like, "It's fine, it's fine." And then, you know, you see her face. She's like, like yeah. that. And you're like, what, 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 what? She's like, it, it's okay. You're you're good. You're good. Yeah. And so they, they just sh- numbed you locally. Yeah, they locally numb you, so you don't yeah. feel it. And they did yeah. a good job. But yeah, I, I, that's my beef. Fucking skin cancer. Dude. And now and now you're like now you're checking everything. You're like, oh it's like, yeah. it's just, but you I, gotta get your moles checked. I get checked every year. You do, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you gotta check them. I remember the the it was a late it was a female. Yeah. She's like, Do you want me to check your dong? She said <laughs> dong. <laughs> and I was like Like she's like she watched your T V show. <laughs> she was throwing your yeah, Maybe she was a fan. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, Yeah, check it out. <laughs> <laughs> no. I was like, Yeah, I think it's okay. But I, I was like I was like can you get skin cancer on the dawn? <laughs> <laughs> well, with you guys, with the way you go out and fucking tan your balls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got to be careful. Oh, fuck. Right? That's a possibility. Tanning your asshole every day. You guys got to be <laughs> super careful. And not only that, but like your penis is like really sensitive to the sun. It's never been oh. out before. So you guys need to be careful when you're tanning your assholes. Dude. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> fuck, dude. <laughs> The girl came in. Oh, dude, that's I have to go to the dermatologist and be like, yeah. I'm sorry, I got, I got to spread them for you. <laughs> have you been tanning this area? Yeah. <laughs> it's like I actually this, have. It's the tannest part of my body. <laughs> the, <laughs> the woman came in to, the, the first woman came in, she numbed, she numbed me. She was like 50 years old. I was like, cool. And then she's like, all right, well, Dr. So-and-so is going to come in. The girl comes in. She looks like she's like a USC student. She's like 22. Oh. And I'm freaking out. I go, I go, are you doing it? Like that. Yeah. She goes, yeah, I'm going to be doing the surgery. And then I was like, oh, fuck. She thinks I don't like her because she's a woman. Right. But I don't like her because she's so young. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't care if a woman does that. A woman, man, that's fine. Women yeah. do a great job. We're just as good as a man. Whatever. So then I go... I go. I was freaking out. I go. I go. I go. You're you're great. I go. You're you're, you're just so young and, pr- and pretty. I said that, and then my yeah. fiance said, what, "What are you saying?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because you wanted to give her a compliment. Yes. to yeah. make up for maybe having maybe being a misogynist, right? Which I wasn't. <laughs> Yeah, like, I've I've overdone it like that too. Yeah. Like I I did the same thing. Yeah, where the person was too young, they thought, and I was like, dude, you're beautiful. You got huge cans and like, <laughs> <laughs> no, your hands just, look it, like they'll be feeling great on my body. I was like, get, get in here. It's just and that you're like, a hot Thank piece you of so ass. much. <laughs> yeah, you're smoking hot piece. I, of I ass. do find that now that I have a, a fiance or girlfriend, like, I do find that I won't say that anymore. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> or even if I, even if someone walks by like, oh, you look great or whatever, like I, 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 I save those. No, I holster a I lot feel, of that I stuff. I feel weird about saying no, that No, me stuff too, me too. I don't want them to feel like a... It feels good too. When you're being like really like loyal and good on that stuff. Yeah, yeah, You feel yeah. like a good man. Like you're like, yeah, I'm good. Yeah. Her friend was over today and she was like, did you see my Instagram post? And I was like, I was like, no, no, I don't go on Instagram. She's like, she's like, oh, she's like, I, I posted my ass on there. Yeah, she's like, I showed like my, my, the change in my ass over the last three weeks or whatever. And, and I just turned to my fans. I was like, I'm, I'm not going to look at that. I no interest in that. No, <laughs> you know who else would do that? <laughs> not look Clint Eastwood. <laughs> Cause he doesn't have social media. <laughs> I just don't think he's the kind of guy who would. <laughs> I don't think he knows what fucking Instagram is. That's true. He's like a hundred, <laughs> but have you ever DM Clint Eastwood? I have. <laughs> <laughs> What do you want? I'm like, Clint, should I be complimenting these ladies who aren't my girlfriend? He's like, I've never complimented a woman in my entire life. And I was like, that's right, Clint. It's so cool when people don't have Instagram. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, would, I mean, like, sometimes I dream about it, but, like, it's our job, right? We yeah, gotta be on yeah, there. I guess. Yeah. I now guess. it's everybody's job. It's, like, yeah, 12 billion people on there. Um, Chad, who's your baby of the week? Dude, my baby of the week is uh, ponzu sauce. <laughs> Put that on anything, dude. The tang is out of this world. Ponzu sauce... I'm gonna I'm gonna put this out there. Yeah. I think all restaurants that serve soy sauce should replace it with ponzu. Now, if you had ponzu in front of me and you had soy in front of me, I would have a difficult time. You won't be able to tell. The taste though. Ponzu is a little tangier though, you're right. It's tang. Right? Yeah. And what are you having this with? Like a chicken or like a sushi? Like a sushi. Uh, but you, yeah, I'll throw it in like a chicken and I'll be like, that's dang. What's your favorite kind of sushi? Um, kind of, I, I like. I mean, I, I'm kind of a sashimi guy. You know, oh, salmon, sashimi, yeah, yellowtail, yeah, yeah. um, all that good stuff. Dude, toro, toro. That's what it is. Toro sashimi. You ever go really high end sushi? Uh, I got sugar fish here and there, but I've never been to no like high, no like high high end. No, like, you ever done that? Like, I want to do like glow fish City kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. you should do fish it. If you like menu. fish, you, you guys should go and do it. Where, where do you go high end? Uh, I don't know. There's places in Beverly Hills where it's like, you know, you sit down and they, they cook for you. Wow. Yeah. That's cool. There's a place in Culver that was on like chef's table. Oh, yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. That's it like, it, it, it doesn't look like much when you look at it. You're yeah. like, oh, this is just like an ordinary hole in the wall. But then it's like, it's like you can't get alterations to anything. They, they, yeah. they serve it to you like how they make it. And then yeah. they're kind of like educating you as you go. Interesting. And then afterwards you just hit a fat Burger King. And probably no ponzu. No ponzu. <laughs> you have to bring your own ponzu. Uh, you, you guys have ponzu? <laughs> it's like going to a French restaurant. I guess if you put salt on your meal at a French restaurant, it's very insulting to the chef. Because oh. ah, you're changing yeah. the taste. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want to put, like, like, it's like putting ketchup on a nice steak or something. Yeah. You're insulting the integrity of the meal. Yeah. That, that happens at sushi restaurants in, like, Beverly Hills. They don't give you soy sauce. Really? Yeah, yeah. I went to one. I can't remember the name of it. I think it was called Hyde or something like that. Right. And uh, no soy sauce. Wow. Not allowed. Can't taste the fish. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, my baby of the week is... Uh... <laughs> my baby of the week is English muffins. <laughs> And and honey nut Cheerios with banana. Ooh, damn. More honey nut Cheerios with banana though. Damn. It's a delicacy that I haven't had since childhood, but it's been in the rotation lately. Yeah. Uh -huh. And it's a great way to start your morning. Big bowl of cereal. Big bowl of cereal. Almond milk or regular milk? Oat. Oat. Yeah, yeah. People like oat. People seem to like oat more full than almond. Full fat on a, oat. I get full fat. Not sweetened, but full fat. Oh wow, you're really going for it. I want to have some fun. I want to set my day off right. Yeah, you know, I think if you gave me the taste test, you, you made me blind, and yeah. and you're like, do the almond milk, do the oat milk. I think I would pick oat milk. Yeah, ten out of ten. Times. I, I like almond milk in my coffee. Okay. Yeah, because oat milk separates in the coffee. Oh, you know, I've kind of noticed that. Yeah, I don't like that. Interesting. I don't like that shit. Yeah, in my coffee, I'm an oat milk guy, but maybe I'll, I'll flip it back to the almond. Um, uh, my my baby of the week is chocolate chip cookies, uh, nice. baked from a bakery, like a like a like not like from like a store, but like you go to the bakery, you buy, and you have one every night. It seems to be that like it it's uh, it's perfect because it like it, it satiates you, it gives you that feeling like you had something amazing, but I don't think it's like too many calories. Plus, I say chocolate chips. That's a good, That's good one. Yeah, like a nice big one. Maybe get one from Erwan or uh, Big Sugar. That. Bristol Farms has some good Bristol ones. Bristol Farms too. has a great cookie. They do a fat yeah. cookie there. Yeah, yeah. Chad, what's your legend of the week? Or My legend, legend, of the legend of the week is this YouTube, uh, Mr. Ballin. You guys know who that is? I've heard of uh -huh. that. He tells like scary stories. And uh, I love it. Yeah. They're kind of disturbing sometimes, but it's just very entertaining. I love ghosts and all that shit. What and, kind of stories does he tell? It it'll it'll range from like murder stories to like uh like ghost kind of stories to like, you know, uh serial killers or just kinda all it's dark dark and mysterious. Oh damn. I think is, yeah. But it's it's just like entertaining. Right. It's just this guy speaking to camera. 
and he's like telling you a story. Really? Yeah, you know, I've been driving and listening to it. I'm like, this is great. Wow. He's crushing it too. He he's, gets like a lot of he's getting a lot of views. He's getting the hits. Yeah. Good for him. Damn, Mr. Ballin. Mr. Ballin. Nice. My legend of the week is uh, conversations with kids. Mm. Mm. Talked to a ten and an eight year old this weekend. Nice. Electric. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These kids' brains are phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. I'm asking the ten year old Mateo. It's my mom's friend's kids, and uh, and I'm like, uh, what do you want to be? He's like scientist. Oh, him and all of his buddies want to be. He wants to. He wants to be a vi- virologist because he doesn't want there to be another pandemic. So oh, that's good. COVID wow. had an impact on these youngins. Yeah. And then I was like. Uh, you, you thinking about girls? He's like, never. I don't think about girls. And I go, really, never? He goes, never. He goes, first, I'm going to focus on work, getting some success, and then I'll worry about women. Really? He's State of the ten. art. Ten. Kids wow. And then he got a little kiddish, and he was trying to splash water on me to get me to come in the pool. And I was like, hey, that's not the way to incentivize me to get into the pool. <laughs> if you were trying to convince me to get in the pool, what would you do? He said, I'd splash all your clothes. Whoa. And I was like, so you're still a child. In some ways, you have very sophisticated thinking. In other ways, yeah. you know, you're still, you think, you know, force is the, is the solution, negotiation. Mm. But, but I was, uh, it was fun. Just fun chatting with young and seeing, because they got, they're in touch with things. Like, uh, I was asking, he's like, he's like, he's like, the bad kids pick on the weird kids and the bad kids make sure they have a lot of friends. So they have more leverage over the weird kids. Wow. Mm. And I was like, that's the rest of life, brother. But it's good you're clued into that yeah. now. Kids are so smart now. They can pick up on it's stuff. Un- it's unreal. Like I, I, my son has a band. They're all 17 and they, that's like all they do. Yeah. Like they, they, they literally record music and like they play shows. They put the troubadour that's and they're cool. just like so much more advanced yeah. than like, Is I it don't the know. internet? Yeah. Like they just put, they have a new song coming out every Friday on Spotify. Wow. Like it's fucking unreal. What kind of band? Like what's the music? It's like, um, Depeche Mode? No, like kind of like, kind of like. I want, not the Strokes, but like Pavement, the Strokes, right? Oh, so they got like pretty do we call sophisticated that, taste. Really sophisticated. Do you, do you call that alt rock still, or do you call yeah. it? Someone said shoegaze. Yeah. What's shoegaze? It's a little shoegazy. Yeah. I guess that's because you like look at your shoes when you're your shoes. It. Yeah. Yeah, but it's just it's just crazy. And and I noticed that too. Like my my son would say that about high school. He'd be like, he'd be like, yeah, everyone's just like putting on an act. When he was like, at like fourteen, I was like, oh yeah. Yeah, he sees through it. Yeah. That must be really comforting, right? To know that he has that kind of like yeah, awareness. He's a good good head on his shoulders. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. It's been it's been great. Yeah, the, and also and also I don't fucking see my kids. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> and I wanna see them. Okay. And there's no court order saying I can't. Yeah. yeah. They just literally like they're literally too busy. Right. Right. They're living their own lives. Yeah. That's what's scary, and you'll yeah. go through that. That's kind of nice. my parents did that with us too. Like they really let me and my brother kind of find our way, and they were, I knew they loved me. I knew they were always yeah. there. It wasn't like a is that good? It, I never felt like in want. Uh, I think it is good, dude. I was out yesterday. We went to the farmers market. I was with my fiance. We're having a good time, and then I'm like driving down the street. I see my daughter with her friend, and I fucking pull a U-turn. This is like a chance to see her. Did any of you just want to watch and see what she was like, like operating without knowing you were there? Uh, no, I don't like to spy like that, but um, no, I, I, I didn't because I want contact with her. I want to be yeah. like, what's up? Hey! Right. And then she was like, oh, we have a huge day planned. She said, we're going here, we're going here, we're going here. And I was like, oh, okay. They're see smart. You. See you later. Yeah. They're like little adults. But it's a little sad, too. And it's yeah, also like change. I have a son that's like really industrious, and part of me is like, gee, I wish you were like a fuck-up like at home. <laughs> that is nice. <laughs> <Dang. laughs> you know? But he's like, I can't. I'm writing a ballet, and I, we've got to record the next song. And wow. He's writing a ballet? Yeah. Yeah, but for high school. That's insane. Yeah, it's insane. Yeah, he's he's really good. Do he's they good. go to like uh, one of those like cool LA schools where like the curriculum is yep, he goes like to, he instead goes. of math you like dig a ditch and measure it or something? Yes. Yeah. That's one so time awesome. one time when I toured the school, I walked in there and I go <laughs> I go I go I go, What's going on? Is that because there's only three kids learning Japanese? And I go, Is everybody sick today? Like that. And she goes, Oh no, no, this is this is the class. Wow. <laughs> three kids learning Japanese. I was like, Are you f- it's insane. We had like <laughs> 70 kids in our class. Yeah. yeah. No one learned a thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, it was just survival. Who's your legend of the week? 
My legend of the week is is my son. Yeah, Wyatt. Wyatt Nash. He's a fucking legend. That's a great name. Yeah. He's a legend. He he wrote this song and they came out with their first song and so I'm like I'm looking at the lyrics and I was like, Oh, I know what this is about. So I went through it and I was like, Oh, okay, and I'm reading the lyrics and I'm like, Okay, I, I get it. It's it's him uh and his friends and He's in the back house and he he's he's drunk he's hung over blah 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 I I thought I had it all figured out and then I called him and I was like ah the song the song's really good and I was like I, I looked at the lyrics and I'm like what, what what's it about you know just to see if I was right and then when he told me what it was about I was like oh never mind he was like oh no it's about the devil and uh, the devil um, you know is trying to like be a good person but he can't and he gets keeps getting pulled back to the underworld like I was completely off. That's wow. a cool song. Yeah, and so just just like I don't know, just watching somebody do their thing at, at that young of an age, you're like, geez. Yeah, yeah, it's really cool. That's really cool. really fun to watch. Chat, what's your quote of the week? This is the last thing. My quote of the week, I go got to go with Darth Vader again. <laughs> Have you come to destroy me, Obi Wan? <laughs> I forget what Obi Wan says. Then you will die. <laughs> Damn. You like Star Wars? Yeah, I get. I have my moments where I, I'm. I'll, I'm a big Star Wars fan. I'll have my moments like every year or so. Where I'll get super into it and I'll watch like Star Wars fan fiction on yeah. YouTube. It's it's so entertaining. Mm-hmm. They're like, this is what Darth Vader was doing mm-hmm. on this day, and this is what it's like in Darth Vader's suit. Mm-hmm. And it's like, uh, I don't know. I just love that. My algorithm is set to George Lucas right now. Oh, is it really? Yeah, dude. This, I just you get big George. Star Wars guy? No, but I. I th- I know I think the phone listens. I think the phone right. heard me watching the Jurassic it Park knows. movie. Everything right. I talk now about. Now I'm getting it feeds Jurassic me. Park and George Lucas. Nice. It's crazy. It's yeah. insane. They 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 got a grip on exactly who we are. And they can feed our worst impulses at any moment cuz they know it'll drag us for hours into their little vortex. One time I was like a few years ago, I was talking to my friend and I was like I was complaining about my algorithm. I was like, "Damn, my Instagram, man, my homepage is all big tits." Like, yeah. What's Instagram doing? He was like, "You did that, <laughs> right? <laughs> like you, yeah." I like that you were surprised. You're like, Instagram keeps sending me I, big jugs. Who does it think this is for? <laughs> like I didn't understand what an algorithm was. Right, you know? right, right. Did you think before then that you weren't into big boobs? Like, were you surprised to learn you're a big boob guy? I know I'm into big boobs, but I just thought I feel like you didn't know, and then you saw the boobs, and you were like, "Wait!" There was like an aha moment. We were like, "Ah, ah, ah!" I, <laughs> I like big boobs. No, I always knew I was into big boobs, but, but I just thought Instagram was just this like fucking crazy place that was just doing big boobs. And he was like, "No, that's just your homepage." That's right. Like, I think if you were into cats, same. it would all be cats. I was like, "Oh." Yeah, yeah, yeah. My quote of the week is a, a comment on a scene from The Wire on YouTube. <laughs> what hurts so bad is Marlo wanted Prop Joe to give up the man running security on the Stash Omar hit. Joe says he's my nephew. I can't give him up like that. So to appease Marlo, he introduces him to Vondos, only for his nephew to give him up and Marlo to cut him out. I know everyone watching this knows this already. It just always hits me so hard. Wow. Damn. The Wire, huh? The Wire on YouTube is one of the best ways to recap a show that you like yeah good community on there yeah did you watch it a long time ago i just rewatched a lot of it but i watched it yeah for the first time like 15 years ago right about that yeah 15 years ago holy yeah. shit man damn holy you like shit. sopranos i like the sopranos more i think that's the best show ever man. but the wire is amazing in its own ways too but your best show ever drama I think Sopranos. For Sopranos, me too. yeah, me too. I also, also, I really loved Mad Men. It's a beautiful show. Yeah, it's beautiful. The writing's so good. Damn, it's a probably a little closer. Mad Men and Sopranos are a little closer to each other than same writer. Yeah, Matthew Weiner. Yeah, Weiner. Well, he wrote for Sopranos. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, he's in there a little bit too. He plays a newscaster yeah. who reports on the mob. I like rewatching and seeing yeah. him do that. John Slattery, amazing, so good. Johnny Coolest Adam, guy in the obviously. world. Coolest guy. The guy that plays Pete. Yeah, Vincent's catharsizer or yeah, something. Yeah, what happened to him? I, don't know. I think he's just Pete forever. He got Peted. Yeah, that's a good show. What's your quote of the week? Quote of the week. Let's see. See, I heard a quote today. Um, yeah. Oh, all. Uh, what is it? Fuck. All something like. All in. Uh, I can't think of the word, but it's you know when any. Uh, 
Fuck. Now I gotta think of another quote. Was it one word? No. It was something like it was something like this. It was like when you're uh if if you're like beholden to somebody, it all it always leads to misery. Mm. That was a quote I read the other day, mm. which I thought was really interesting. It's true. Yeah. But I'm not saying it right. I really blew it, guys. No. Well, we didn't prepare you at all. I we can't go out on that. It. Let's see. Think of it. Yeah, oh, I read a good quote. Home, no bad art. I read that the other day, which I thought was interesting. I've been painting a lot. Oh, cool. Oh. Yeah. You got a style? <laughs> no, not yet. I think I have to do like five. I had a, I've done like th- four paintings so far, and I realized, I was like, I got to do like 5,000 paintings to get somewhere. Have you guys ever been to a, an art museum and seen like an all white canvas and it's in there and then that's it? Or just like a painting that's just like one like. Yeah, Ro- yeah. Rothko. Yeah. Yeah, his. And they're like, it's the depth of the red that yeah. makes it powerful. I'm like, okay. Yeah. I'm always baffled at art. You ever see The Price of Everything on HBO? Mm-mm. It's really good. It's a doc that explains art and why and how and why things are worth money and why mm-hmm. things aren't. And it's really good. Really good doc. Check that out. I, yeah, I mean, I love modern art. It's my favorite, but some of it doesn't pass the sniff test. But then the stuff that does, it's yeah. like, because it's always smart ideas behind it. Like the guy who did just the white canvas, he really thought that out. He has a whole philosophy behind it, and it's commenting on like industrialism and uh-huh. like commerce and all this other shit. But uh-huh. but there's just not enough skill there for me. But yeah. then like you get something like Picasso where it's the idea and the skill. Yep. And then you're like, okay, this is like changing the way my brain works. I, I, I love it. Do you like I Banksy? I do. I love Banks. I think he's a genius. Pretty I think, interesting. Yeah. Because to do it in the real world, too, to put beauty in like these unlikely places, yeah. and then to be like commenting on society, but to also have it look cool, yeah. and then the anonymity portion of it, it all combines, and I'm like, that's... Do you remember Exit from... Exit it's like my show. favorite documentary. So you remember the Mr. Brainwash? Sure. I've we, seen him around sometimes. We went to his... He had a show in Beverly Hills. He had a big-ass show. Like... He, they took over the radio and TV museum. I mean, there, there was like three floors of Mr. Brainwash. Wow. And I, and I was in there, and we just went to go see it to like Snapchat or whatever. And, and then he pops out, and he's like, oh, hello. He's like, I'm Mr. Brainwash. And he was the nicest guy you'll ever meet. And he was just like, and I thought it was so interesting in that movie, he was like the butt of the joke. He's dumb in the movie, but he might have been playing a part. Because the oh. whole, well, because the whole movie, you don't know what's real, what's not. Like, oh, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. You're blowing my mind. So wait, he's part of the movie? I think Didn't you can prank him? I think you can watch that movie and believe it's all an elaborate prank by Banksy on that guy and that it's all been coordinated, but I kind of think that whole movie was like scripted start to finish and everyone was kind of in on it. I think that's what's cool about that movie is you can't trust anything you're seeing. Oh, I never thought of it like that. I think so. Because in the movie, it, it's um Banksy sets out to find somebody who makes terrible art and make them famous. Mm. And so he finds this guy, Mr. Brainwash, who's a real guy mm-hmm. who makes pop art. Mm. And like, you know, I like the art. I think it's cool. Yeah. You know, but it's very like, it'll be like Darth Vader taking a piss. Or it's very like easy. Yeah. It's like first thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But some of it. But it's not that different from the other stuff. I think that was like the commentary of it. Is it's that not that different than Banksy? Yeah, it's not that different than what any of those kind of street artists were doing I see and that you can easily trick even like the intelligentsia into believing it's good if enough people say it's good it's all just like the power of like consensus so I thought that was so interesting that like this guy was the butt of the joke in the movie but his art eventually broke through and he had this giant exhibit in Beverly Hills where he was making so much money and like you know what I mean yeah well and now he's like an established figure yeah that's insane I I love that movie I think uh we actually watched it in the writer's room for our show. You did? Because like, we wanted to prank Disneyland. Oh, right, right, right. Because they, they actually got away with it. They did. A, he put a, a Guantanamo guy who had been like, you know, was yeah. like kind of in the detainment clothes and had his head covered like, uh, I don't know, like alluding to waterboarding or something like that. And they put it like next to the Matterhorn, oh, which yeah, is yeah, so yeah. like yeah, yeah, interesting. Yeah. Banks but, did that? In the movie, he does it, yes. but I don't even know if that was... We don't know if it was Banksy. We don't know who Banksy is. Right. That might have been a guy playing Banksy who talked to Banksy. There's a picture of Banksy online. Is there? Supposedly. That's so disappointing. <laughs> How do you know that's Banksy? We don't know. <laughs> we don't know. I, honestly... I love talking to you about this shit. Like, you could be so, Banksy. I could. You could be Banksy. I'm Banksy. You could be an AI robot. What if we time. waited... This is like episode 300. What if we waited till now? To reveal that we're Banksy. <laughs> what a 
Man, you should have should have used it on the Netflix show if you were. <laughs> we're we're Banksy. <laughs> That's why we told him we're like bring back season two. We'll tell him we're yeah, Banksy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we should. Are we do gonna that. see season two? Mm. Um, if we do better numbers in Bangladesh, yeah. Do you have any? Netflix what? is crazy, huh? No, yeah. I, it didn't. They don't give you numbers. They don't give you anything. They gave us the numbers. Oh, they did. Yeah, yeah they I were. They don't give numbers. No, they were pretty transparent about it. We just oh. more people needed to watch it. You you get ten days and twenty eight days. Those are your numbers. You get ten. Uh, you're like the, your numbers at ten days and your numbers at twenty eight days. And oh, they do. I thought they didn't share that shit. They do. Yeah, oh, they do. But you know, I genuinely think it's a gift. I think we'll come up with something different and new. And like, I yeah. think we need to keep evolving. Like the lingo needs to change. Yeah. The problems yeah. need to change. I think it's um, it's like, uh, of course, you want them to give you a second season because it's like, yeah, great. They right. want more of it, but it just forces you to rethink stuff and to push harder. So yeah. um, I think it'll only make us better. Uh, for sure. That's the only choice. Yeah. Not that I'm desiring it. And I, then maybe a movie. That's what we're working on. We're working on one right now. Yeah. Like a movie would be fun. Yeah. yeah. You know? We're working on a bunch. We're trying. Yeah. yeah. You write every day? Um, no, work on something every day, but... Yeah. I used to write stand-up every day, but... It's tough. It's tough to write movies tough. and stand-up. I, I found two with stand-up, but... You might come up with ideas if you write every day. But for me, everyone's different, but for me, it's. I think it's like it'll like hit you and then be like, oh, that's a good idea, and write down. But that's like Eminem writes all the time, but he never uses anything he writes. Right. He just writes to keep the muscle working, but yeah. then he goes into the studio and he's just oh, like, bah, 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 bah. Wow. yeah. It's just keeping his brain active. That's yeah. cool. You're like yeah. Eminem. <laughs> I saw Seinfeld the other day. He was like. He was like, he was just basically saying, I don't know why a stand up does anything with stand up. Like, stand up shouldn't do a podcast. Stand up shouldn't write a movie. I agree with him. Yeah. He's right. But he's not, 100% but right. But he also has like bajillions of dollars. That's I'm true. Like, hey, man, I'm trying to keep this train moving, dog. That's true. Yeah. Good point. The moment demands well content. Said. Well said. But I love you, Jerry. <laughs> he's a good guy. Should we call it? Yeah. Dude, yeah. thank you so much for coming in. No, man. I love talking to you guys. Uh, yeah, it was a blast. It was a pleasure. Dude. Pleasure, man. Good to see you. Thanks, guys. If you need advice, these guys are real.